what are you doing October 28th at Vino's? You're watching wrestling is what you're doing. Little Pizza Shop of Horrors featuring Kill Order and Open Casket. Tickets online right now for $20 or $23 at the door. Get you some. Is that it? I didn't forget nothing, did I? <laughs> I think that's everything. November 4th. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, Crash Cast cover show. November 4th, 2023. Year of our Lord. There's no person in front of me, Kurt. It's a camera. Millions, potentially millions. You're not wrong. <laughs> viral is, do be viral. And Crash Cast cover show, November 4th, 2023, at Fino's Brew Pub, 923 West 7th Street, if you didn't know. This already sucks. I'm going to start this over. Yeah, why are you doxing the place? I'm doxing the venue. Hey, come here. Don't come here, though. You know, you got to know where it's at before you get here. Shit. I mean, S-H-I-T, algorithm. What are you doing November 4th? Fucking around? You trying to find out? Come to Vino's. 923 West 7th Street. You don't, you don't have to say the address. I'm reading the flyer, man. I do like that intro, though. November 4th. <laughs> November 4th. God damn it. Okay. This is tough. This is actually tough. November 4th. You fucking around? You trying to find out? Well, come find out with us at the Crash Cast cover show. $15 if you get your tickets from me or any of the bands, right? Meow. But at the door, it's 20 bucks. Save yourself 5 bucks. Find one. Get it. It's going to sell out. Don't be silly goose, all right? All American Rejects, Prop Hunter, check. Green Day, the Espionage Act, check. Yeah, Deftones by Salon Blonde, double check. Knocked Loose by Zashed, triple check. That's 17 checks. See you there. Peace. Pretty good. Stupid. But good. <laughs> it could be tighter. If I do it more, the better I'll get at it. I'm just bad at it now because yeah. I, I. Huh? No. Murdering? <laughs> yeah. I do it, the better I feel. I mean, you said have it like a conversation. That is kind of what I would have. That is. That, that's how you would have the conversation. I mean, what are you doing November 4th? You fucking around? Yeah? You trying to yeah. find out? Huh? When was the last time you had a conversation? Oh, lots of people. What are you doing? You fucking around? You fucking off? You doing shit? Huh? You busy? You ain't busy. You fucking lying to me. You're watching Netflix. Get off your dumb ass. Okay? Come to fucking Vino's. Watch bands do cool shit. Quit being a boring person. All right? Live your life. 923 West 7th Street. <laughs> okay? Address. All American <laughs> Rejects. We got All American Rejects by Prop Hunter. Fucking checkmate. Get your tickets now. Pachow. God, I'm so fat. I hate it. I think drugs are the only answer at this point. It is? I thought we were done. Do you have tickets? No. Do you want tickets? Get your tickets from me. Get your tickets from Zash performing Knocked Loose. Get your tickets from Prop Hunter doing All American Reject. Get your tickets from the Espionage Act doing Green Day or Salon Blonde doing Deftones. They all got tickets. 15 bucks in advance. Do it. It's going to sell out. Or it's 20 bucks at the door if you're lucky enough to pay 20 bucks at the door. Yeah. Crash Cast cover show. Third year in a row. It's going to be fucking awesome because it's been awesome. It's going to stay awesome. November 4th, Vino's Brew Pub. See you there. Sparkle fingers. Huh? Not bad. 
well, you would, would you rather pay for what Netflix? You want to watch Netflix? Netflix would is you fucking. Pay for Netflix or be able to spend fifteen dollars for one night of entertainment. One unforgettable night of entertainment. You'll remember this fucking night longer than you'll remember any of those shit ass shows they're putting out, huh? Because we do quality and in person, and we'll say hi to you, and we won't cancel your subscription at all. We Don't love you. Your subscription for you. Yeah. <laughs> Come one, come all. Bring your dirtiness. We're like the Statue of Liberty of fucking shows. Give us your tired, your weak, and your hungry, your huddled masses. We're putting all this in, right? Okay, cool. Do one more. This is sideways, too. I hope we just leave all of this. This is fucking insane. This is pure chaos. I love it. This is how we should do ad reads. <laughs> Ten minutes of fucking off. I do like the Netflix single, though. What do you like paying for boring time to sit around and just watch your phone any damn way? Why don't you come be on your phone at Vino's and record a life-changing experience? All ages. Forgot that in the last one. It's all ages. You can be 7 years old. You can be 57 years old. Tickets are only 15 bucks, 20 bucks at the door. Solid chance you're not going to get one at the door. Actually, you will because they won't let us sell out tickets only. So, they, lucky they you. Would. Yeah, which is not. <laughs> there are 100 pre-sale tickets. There's 100 pre-sales. Okay. So, November 4th, Vino's Brew Pub, 923 West 7th Street, $15, $20. All American Rejects, Green Day, Deftones, Knocked Loose. It's going to be a crazy night full of awesome, fun and adventures, pizza and booze. Come hang out with us. Say hi. Podcast celebrities will be there. Podcast celebrities will be there. A couple of them. Uh, we love you. Thank you. Welcome to Costco. Listen to Tiny Towns. Cut. <laughs> That's perfect. We're leaving all that in. Yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> you didn't just drive all the way from Fayetteville just to come do this, did you? Mm, mildly. Uh, wow. <laughs> I also got to see my grandma, but yeah, this was a big part of it. So. Well, how's grandma? She's good. Good. About good. to be eighty. Damn. I know. She's kicking it. Like, People don't live to eighty no more. She is one of those where she's rocking and rolling. She lives in one of those, like, kind of old people communities in the sense Dope. that she has her own house, mm -hmm. but people take care of her lawn, and there's someone to call if something Is breaks. It in Hot Springs? It's in Little Rock. Oh, really? And so she had a dinner party last night, and a dinner, <laughs> yeah, no, like, my grandma is a social butterfly, and I genuinely think her friends were trying to set her up with someone. And she was like, well, sparks didn't fly, so, you know. Like, Unreal. <laughs> like, she is the most blunt but, like, awesome person. Good to know it and never so, changes, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. But we got to hang out, and then um, my partner's on drill this weekend for the Army, so she's up there. So it was kind of just like most of my people are in Little Rock. Yeah. I'll come down. So. so it worked out. Yeah, it worked Good. out well. Good. So what do you do up there? Oh, gosh. Radio station. Radio Let's talk station. about that. Yeah. yeah. So I run, well, I run. I'm the station manager mm -hmm. for KXUA, which is the student-run radio station cool. at the University of Arkansas. And we we do so much. We've really been expanding. A lot of, a lot of what I do is getting us more connections. Mm -hmm. That's really the job of the manager is kind of the face of the station, Absolutely. logistics. And I have six amazing people under me who... Each have their own responsibilities. Kitty Mayhem. I love it. Good Lord. <laughs> Never. She's Little wreaking havoc. So cute. Aw, poor thing. But <laughs> a lot of what I do is kind of trying to connect KXUA into the music scene. Yeah. So I'm really passionate about local music. We just worked with Hop Out DIY on Bucket Brigade. So yeah. they brought in Peach Blush, Second Life. Sad Palmino, modeling, and 
Chrono Wizard. So it was this multi-genre lineup. Love multi-genre. It was so much fun. Yeah. Like, it was such a good time. It was last Sunday. And they it was their first show not being a DIY venue anymore. And so they've turned into, like, a booking agency. So they did it at George's. Really? Which was really interesting. interesting. Yeah. It's just the thing of having a house show spot isn't very logistical for the way Fayetteville's going right now. No. At all, and there's so much. That's such <laughs> yeah. a just loaded thing to say. Right. But there's really not a space for a true DIY venue yet, so they're trying to bring DIY to the existing venues, which yeah. I think is cool. I Partnership yeah. through partnerships and things like that? Yeah. yeah, and so we were a partner on that. It's kind of getting the college crowd to go because I'm like, y'all, there's so much cool music. That's Please pay attention right. to it, you know? And if they don't know, they'll never know because yeah. it's something that can just exist People like, there's an underground what now? Yeah. yeah. Like when, because I moved to Fayetteville in 2020, there was no music scene happening, obviously. And I just got lucky finding about KXUA because I worked at Block Street Records. Okay. And the former station manager came in and we started talking one day and she was like, you need to fill this out. I was like, she hands me a paper and I was like, fill this out are you talking about okay you work and here I, now yeah. you don't get to say no yeah and i'm like okay what and i see it's like volunteering for the student radio station and i'd moved from nashville which is a whole thing and we can get into that too but i'd moved from nashville and i had no clue how to get back into the music scene i was like fayville doesn't have a music scene i'm giving up on this whole want to go do music writing thing mm. like whatever and so Got a job at a record store because it was like, why not? And then I found out about radio and I was like, this is so cool. Like, let me just do a show. I'll call it Altaholics Anonymous. And you just kind of, it was a. <laughs> Altaholics. Altaholics. That's good. That's good. And it was all like heavy alt music and everything. And it was really fun. Um, and then. I was like, wait, I can make money doing this and got a staff position. Sometimes. Slow, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Very rarely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, let's be real. It's student pay. Right. You are not making more. I don't make more than 500 a month from right, it. Right. So like, it's a student job. But Does it count towards your uh, degree of any it's kind? It's like, it counts towards like service hours. So mm. like our volunteers get volunteer hours that we sign off on. And then doesn't count towards your degree but it is nice to have an extracurricular on your resume so it's one of those things <clears throat> so if you're in communications yeah. having it on there is like a bonus yeah. rather than yeah okay like i have i'm journalism and people are like oh you manage a station you do radio do you do podcasting which like i've <laughs> mildly done and i'm like i don't want to do radio news but yeah. you know i i can so well you know it's like what there's a mitch hedberg joke he's like oh you can tell jokes well can you write a movie it's like well you can cook can you farm it's like yeah. they want you to do all the stuff it's like yeah. how many things can you do that we can pay you for one salary that is <laughs> yeah. that is so true and yeah. like with management i because i moved up from volunteer to music director miss girl you are wreaking some havoc today she's so cute though well, this isn't just me. oh yeah she, she i love cats and i call them all miss girl so i have three they're all girls they are all miss girl they're all when, miss girl they are all miss girl whenever they get in trouble so you're never not talking to all three of them at the same time anyway probably oh probably yeah, yeah no two of them are kittens one of them's old and doesn't like the other two of course so, as it goes but i feel like I'm trying to think what i was saying so back to like management yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah i feel like what i've noticed is going from volunteer to then one of the paid positions to now my second paid position as manager i do so much it's, oh yeah it's absurd like I, I look at my schedule and i'm like where's my break when can i eat like mm. they no on the run on the run uh -huh. on the road i literally like I there was a pizza kind. on this table just before you showed up yeah no <laughs> yeah. i keep kind bars and like food in my backpack uh -huh. and like any bag there is guaranteed to be a protein bar absolutely like, that is Smart. how i roll yeah. and so I don't know, but KXUA actually, we're even though, of course, managing around seventy DJs is a lot. What um, the? F yeah, fuck? <laughs> so we went seventy. Seventy. We went. So when I started, pandemic times, we had, I think it was me and fifteen other people, and that seems more normal. Yeah, and then we slowly expanded out to where last semester we had around forty, and this semester we had seventy what because we have some multi-person shows. But okay. It's still, okay. like one of our shows is three people, so they're yeah, one yeah. hour on air, and then another show is like two people, 
Do you have multiple booths or is this like a clear it's out situation? Clear out. Or, like wow. we have one booth. We do have a podcast recording booth and like four pre recorded shows. They have a space. Yeah. Mm. We do have a podcast booth, which is nice. Hmm. And you can like record your shows if you want to keep them for so like the student resume. only thing. Yeah. So, so you can learn how to do the. Th- yeah, uh, it is student only. We do have like one professor podcast because I'm like, we'll probably add more, but she does one. She's our kind of crime and courts and newsy podcast because okay. we need that. But while I love these kids, they are students and. I don't want to make people mad. Right. And so, like, we have a true crime podcast right now, and I just sit him down, and I'm like, here are the requirements. If you ever get pushback from family, we take it off air. We issue a statement. Yeah. Like, I am not <laughs> getting us sued. We will not get sued because you want to <laughs> talk about crime. And so, like, I'm, I'm kind of a hard ass at times. Like, I know I am. But Do you want a podcast to be yeah. successful, though? Yeah. True crime. Yeah. True crime podcast. I don't know how. It's like instantaneous. I know. And for me, it's like, I am terrified of all of that. I am not their audience. So like. I listened to one. Somebody sent me one. They were like, you're going to. This story. It's so crazy. It was about some poor girl here in Arkansas, actually. This is on this thing called Morbid. It's one of the more popular ones. I'm in my car driving. listening. I'm I'm bawling. (laughs) And I'm like, who the fuck is listening to this? Why is this so popular? This is so terrible. And I turn it off. Yeah, I don't get I don't get it. Like it Torture. sensationalizes things. And I, so what I told the guy, I'm like, look, you can talk about cases, you can mm-hmm. talk about facts. I was like, we are not here to even consider theories. Like we do not bring no, names. No injecting. No injecting. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can inform all day. Right. And so I'm like, if you want to talk about what's happening in a certain case. These are the facts as we know them to be. Yes. So via so, the court documents. Yeah, yeah. no, literally. Yeah. And I'm like, I know that takes some of the fun out. And then this one guy was like, can we talk about, like, conspiracy theories on campus? I'm like, sure. Just if you're concerned, run it by me. Right. Run it. I literally. Do the fun ones. Like, there's a spaceship outside of yeah. Jupiter right now, and we're all, Yeah, you know, there's yeah. that one. Do there's those the, ones. There's one where there's tunnels under campus, which oh, are yeah. true. Like, there are legitimate tunnels. But now they're, like, making up a rumor that, like, the basilisk lives in There's tunnels everywhere, it. man. Yeah, there's <laughs> tunnels all under Fayetteville. And they're, they're connected. like. connected. They're running with it. I think one of them for like our Halloween shows is literally going to act like he's broadcasting from the tunnels Love and do it. like voice effects. Uh-huh. I'm so ready for that because we have so many people that they just bring in all of these fun ideas and it's turned into something that's like not just, oh yeah, we go on air, we play our music. It's a community of things. Yeah. yeah. Makes and everything like, better. That's what I really like. My whole time being at KXUA, the big goal was just get community started like i am such a fan of just i won't say i built it from the ground up because i definitely did not like cakes we existed 20 plus years before me it's as old as me so it existed 20 years before me before i started but we were in a very different position yeah with admin with staffing when radio was different yeah radio it was its its, its own thing it was the king of the crop and then now there's so much media it's been forced to change and yeah kind of become a new thing but try to keep the same hour-long programming and yeah yeah. it's it's been weird and like I what I do for my show because I still get to do a show which is nice obviously and so I do like all new music I try to find small bands where I'm like hey can I radio debut this because my whole thing is like Uh, fresh finds Fridays uh, it's it's a tongue twister fresh finds Fridays with DJ Fletch I can't even say it three Uh times fast like it's a tongue twister but it's really fun and so if I do you have one of those cool radio intros welcome to I try to do it I almost said French fried Fridays (laughs) hey (laughs) hey if I do a food episode (laughs) food reviews food reviews fridays that's actually someone may actually steal that that's the next one yeah you can have it that's good okay yeah but no i don't really have like a radio intro so to speak i usually have like a little spiel i say Mm. and i'm like you know what's up you're tuned into fresh finds this is dj fletch bringing you the latest and greatest in new music like that's kind of it's a little more authentic yeah a little more authentic hey what are you guys doing? Yeah. Tuesday night. Yeah. We we do have DJs who do that side of things too. And I'm like, that's why I love it because everyone kind of does their own style. Yeah. We also get the DJs who hate to talk, which is very ironic. So but they're they just, just playing music. They just want to play their music and they'll be like, that was song name by artist. 
Next up is it's just AI and, reading a music. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? If that's what gets you comfortable being on air and you run with it one day, sure, whatever. Yeah, like yeah. we need all types, and sometimes they play the coolest stuff. Is the thing like they just may be more introverted i'm very extroverted so like same yeah i was like i am a major extrovert um my girlfriend jokes i don't know what a stranger is mm. that's like essentially i will hear a conversation i'm like that's really interesting i'm gonna just listen to it and then if i feel the need to butt in i will <coughs> excuse me you know literally i was walking on you guys campus. talking about bugs <laughs> no no oh my god <laughs> yesterday i was not yesterday but like thursday i was walking on campus and this guy behind me, like, we're leaving lab at the same time. And he just turns to someone. He was like, what is a worm? Like, what the fuck is a worm? <laughs> and, and he's like, is it a bug? Is it a, like, animal? I'm like, I'm pretty sure. Insect? Well, yeah, I, what is a worm? I really don't know. I'm going to look it up right now because I told him I thought it was a mollusk because it's like. Uh, I'm like it's I, a pretty good one. Okay. I'm More looking it up. More snail-esque. Yeah, it is like a snail without a shell. But it just eats dirt and poops dirt. It's yeah. all it does all day long, every day. Okay, <laughs> so it's an invert. Okay, what is it? Like, <laughs> what is Google. a worm? This is such an existential what question. I've never classified? had to think about something like okay. this. So it's, it's classified. An, the it's government <laughs> doesn't want us to know. <laughs> no, no. Worms are drones. Heard it here it's first. It's classified <laughs> as like an invertebrate something. Just is a worm a bug or an insect? Mm. They are. Neither. They literally won't tell me. Like I'm looking at like Brit <laughs> Britannica and everything, there and it we go. won't tell See, me. This is how this is how it gets so started. This is how conspiracy theories. This started. is how it starts. That's one for on air. I will. We let just them you just broke a, a couple hundred people's brains. They're all gonna be like, "Wait, what the fuck?" <laughs> no, it's actually like I was thinking about it, and I turned to the guy. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they're like a mollusk or something because they can't really do much, and like they literally they have, have one to be function. in water. Like, yeah. they have to be wet, and so he was like, okay, that makes it. And we ended up talking about it, and I'm like, I really like this. So, like, I end up just talking to anyone, and it, like, it never really does me dirty, but, like, it's just always entertaining. Got like, a story to tell, for sure. Oh, yeah. Always. Always. And, like, my whole career is going to be, like, communications and talking okay. to people, because I'm a journalist by, like, trade, and so I work in, like, news writing as well. What's, like, the goal you're shooting for? I mean, I have a job interview tomorrow. It's the oh, second shit. one, so stage Fingers two. Um, so that'd be like a comms and social media position for uh, Visit Bentonville, if that one works out. So kind of getting to So like do, more of a behind-the-scenes directorial yeah, thing, type thing? Yeah, tourism marketing, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I pitched them ideas on like music industry stuff because I'm all about – like I'm going to keep the music stuff, of course um, – and then I want to write a book one day on kind of like Northwest Arkansas's music history and what mm. it's done because it's vast and expansive and there's like, there's no one chronicle of it right. yet. Like there's not books on it, even though there, there's so much there. Like I talk to people and they'll be like, oh yeah, so I played in this band from this time to this time and then yeah. this. I'm like, I'm here for that, but that's so interesting, you know? That's this whole podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I love stuff like that. And then I also, like, I do traditional print media where, like, I've written for newspapers and stuff. Really? Yeah. So mm. I wrote for Tulsa World over the summer. Tulsa and, World. Yeah. And, like, it's over in Tulsa. And I it helped me realize I don't think I want a career in traditional in print, print media. media. Yeah. It's very, like, Granted, I was an intern, you know, but they treat you like you're a real reporter. And I was like, it was a good experience, but it was one of those things where I'm like, I don't think I'd be happy doing this mm -hmm. every day. Like, there's so much constantly. I had color-coded Excel sheets. Like, literally, it was, like, the topic, the source I needed. Did I need photo, audio, video, like... Um, you're just checklisting the, yeah your whole day is just a checklist yeah and it's like and i loved the people i got to talk to i oddly enough got to interview zach bryan's dad like <laughs> that was the randomest thing you know um that was the randomest interview like being an industry person will get you into some random yeah things oh i've yeah. noticed that like i he was so Tulsa obviously is like 15 minutes away from where Zach Bryan like grew up and everything. Mm -hmm. And so they were running like a um, sorry, one second. Okay. I have a reflux thing, not okay. your fault. Y'all fill in. Yeah. Kurt. 
Okay. Is this camera still working, Kurt? Yeah. Okay. The kitty cat was doing kitty cat things. Doodly doo. Oh, November 4th. Um, Crash Cast cover show. Wait, is this out before then? This is out after. You sure? Somebody's outside riding a four wheeler down the street. Oh, the week of. Well, this weekend, November 4th. Hallelujah. Crash Cast cover show with Zashed, Knock Loose. Oh, I've got this. Green Day. Oh, well, I'm talking to you. You're the person in the room. Uh, Green Day by um, Any Given Room. No, I'm just kidding. Espionage Act. <laughs> you imagine we just put them on every year. We uh, huh? We could. They'd be down. They would be down. They're so fucking talented. Uh, damn it. Now I've lost my train of thought. What's uh, 20 bucks at the door, $15 tickets. Buy a ticket. And then what else? Uh, who, who else is playing? Give me it. Give it. Prop Hunter. All American Rejects. Oh, you're good. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interrupt Just interject. No, there's no interrupting here. No, I have a whole, I deal with the whole esophagus procedure, which is so fun whenever, you know, you talk for a living. So, um, is it so the, the thing, thing, thing where it just pops up? It I have a friend with that. It pop up. It, like, I get esophageal spasm, so it mm-hmm. feels like there's something stabbing my chest. Mm. It's yeah, it's a joy. So I just live with that, and my buddy sometimes was it gets up. really painful. Oh yeah, no. He'll I just don't be do talking that. and just be like, Ugh, and it'll just fall out of his mouth. He, I mean, oh, you're like, what God. the fuck? No. It took a while to get used to a guy just randomly throwing up, yeah. but you know, eventually you're yeah, just like, no. yeah, there he goes. No, mine is more like internal stabby pain. Interesting. So. But no, back to the Zach Bryan thing. Oh my God. So his dad. His dad. Didn't meet Zach Bryan, didn't meet his dad. Ends up, there's another reporter who's been wanting to interview him 28 different times. Never got it. <laughs> I email him. I'm like, hi, Mr. Dwayne. My name's Lydia Fletcher. I'm a reporter with Tulsa World wanting to cover X event. Would you be willing to talk? He's like, uh, yeah, I'll be in town Tuesday. Let's meet here. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? And Easy so enough. He, he has a whole thing. I figured it out. He's all about helping rookies and underdogs, and it's very obvious from that email, I am both a rookie and an underdog. Sure. So he was willing to go with it. So Hey, like 19 hey, wise. 92 wise. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Sometimes, but no, thankfully not that. But no, that did end up going well. Very strange. I did like three articles with that. I did like a piece on him. Damn, coverage about making of an a event. Coverage stretch, damn. Yeah. Oh my God, no, because it was a piece on him previewing the concert that was happening, an article about the event that I had to write within three hours. Event started at four. What the fuck? I had to get, like, okay, so I had to get about a half page of copy, which is writing, yeah, yeah. to my editor by seven. So I had to be at the event at four. Keep in mind, this is Oklahoma in July. Last day of, no, August, because it was the literal last day of my job. Burning hot outside. Oh, yeah. It's good. 110. I'm like, I'm dying. (laughs) I'm literally wearing this skirt because we're not allowed to wear shorts at that job. No shorts. No shorts. So I'm like, I'm going to get the skirt with a slit and like a tank top. And if they try to get mad at me. It's my it's last, last day. day. It's like senior high. I'm yeah. not And you're lucky I'm even here. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I was dying. Luckily, they had fans. They had water, you know. And so I get my few interviews, and I go inside in the AC, and I'm like, oh, thank God. And then, you know, I'd sit, and i write, and i do everything. But, and then, so I'm inside, like, BOK Center's media room, because then Zach Bryan's playing on stage at 7, and I have to write a review. Interesting. And it was, it was intense. And I'm just, I'm not built for that. I, I am to a degree. I can do deadlines. Or do you sit there and type? Oh, I have. So I have an app that auto transcribes as I'm doing interviews. Absolutely. Because I am not about to transcribe what someone else is saying. (laughs) I'm not. And then, um, I will copy paste in direct quotes and just write around them. Gotcha. So I have my little workarounds. I mean, I've done. I've been writing news since I was 17, so I'm six years into this. So I, I'm used to it, but I would much rather do, like, branded writing, mm. content, like, kind of help. My big thing, like, I realize what I care about is, like, getting artists a platform, getting business as a platform. Mm-hmm. And journalism is a way to do that, but honestly, 
advertising or yeah. just vlogging stuff well, like that's that. what it's all about yeah you know social media everything oh yeah reels do a reel do a thing la di da <laughs> oh my god reels the worst yeah, uh, everybody sends them to me, and then I just repost them, but then I forget that Reels exist, and you can just put it on there, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm very bad at it. Yeah, Admittedly, no. very bad. Me, too. And it's like... Just step away from me. Well, oh, you're good. I'm getting gum in my mouth. <laughs> I'm like... No. They don't need to hear that. Well, it's fine. Somebody will complain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's life. Everyone <laughs> complains, so... Well, podcasting, it's like uh, the two bugaboos, they're... Uh, Eating food, apparently, and uh, plastic plastic water bottles. Right? Yeah, that's like ASMR. Uh-huh. The ASMR thing. Cool. And these are kind of gain jacks, so I could see how it would be a little yeah. bit annoying. No, that does make sense. Like, I've been trying to drink away from the mic and things like that. but I forget, and then sometimes I'm like, I'm just like in the microphone, just... <gasps> like, every <laughs> breath is heard, like this, like you're touching it. Oh you my God. really forget, though. Yeah. These things tend to disappear, and then you're just kind of in the moment. And yeah. before you know it, you're listening back, and you're like, ah, that should have just been a little bit further away. Yeah. Learning from your own mistakes. Is... Oh, God, that's my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's life, though. Do you ever listen back to your own broadcast? To like? It's disturbing. Mm-hmm. I hate it. It's, I hate it. I did a pre-record on Friday, and then I tuned into my radio at 1, which is when my show is, and I was like, this is a mistake, because I hear my voice, and I'm like, ew, even though it sounds good, but to me, it's like, this is terrible. Oh, everyone. Yeah. Everyone has the same reaction. Yeah, so. It's because you hear your your voice, you hear it inside your own head, so yeah. it's like very different. Every, the first, I don't know, 50 episodes of this. I was just like, ah, man, my voice sounds fucking terrible. That is me every time I hear my own air on the airwaves. Because also, like, I'll usually, like, slow it down. I'll be like, all right, y'all, that was... And I'm like, ew, <laughs> ew. Why did you choose that? I'm like, why did I do that? <laughs> and I do everything unscripted. Like, I don't write scripts for my radio shows. Sure, I have my artists in order and the songs. But, like, I'm just going to talk. And then I think about what I talked about, and I'm like, the hell did I say that? That's and this. I, yeah, no. that's and this. And I can't cuss at all on air. Oh, see, that's like that. I would fuck. I mean, there's no yeah. way. Yeah. There's absolutely no way. Oh, you can't cuss. I'd be like, what the fuck? You just cussed. <laughs> yeah, no. I cuss like a sailor most days. Yup. I got used to it over the summer because, granted, in the newsroom you can cuss, but like with clients and interviewees, mm. no. But KXUA, you can't say hell. Damn. Hell? No, hell, damn, bitch, bastard, ass? piss, ass. None of piss? that. You can't say piss. You can't say piss. And so. I got to go take a tinkle. I'm sorry. Yeah. What is no. fucking nerfed every word? Jesus. Yeah. But the songs can. Oh, get the so fuck the out songs of here. Of course. Can. It's FCC. But the songs can't say, like, fuck, shit. Okay. Pat, se- George Carlin, Seven Dirty Words. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I thought we were past all that. Unfortunately for colleges, no. Oh, uh, okay. But my favorite band is Mannequin Pussy. On Never hair. Never heard of it. Oh Crazy. my god, they're so good. I'll I check literally it out. have a tattoo for them. Like That's okay. a good tattoo. Thank you. Paper doll tattoo in Fayetteville. I will shout them out every time. Okay. Coolest shop. Like queer women owned. Great environment. I'll have to check but it no. out. But no, Mannequin Pussy is like a girl punk band. Okay. Their name on air, they are Mannequin Kitty. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'm trying to think. Other censorships have had to do. Uh, psychedelic cor- porn crumpet. Porn crumpets are psychedelic corn crumpets. Of course. Of course. Um, corn to corn. Yeah. Very popular one. That's a, And so everyone knows what you mean, but see, the people that don't know what you mean are purposely... They don't need to yet. They're kids. They don't need to know that. So, But they know. They have the internet. Yeah. Who are you protecting? They've known that since they were two. Right? Right. And so it's just one of those things where I'm like, uh, we all fight the censorship, but we're stuck with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I I mean, you can actually be fined, right? Oh, the fine is $400,000. We will lose the station. Yeah. So I teach these kids, like, they sign a contract whenever they start. Whoa. And, like, we have, like, actual – that's why I'm kind of so intense about it because I care, like, so much about KXUA to where I'm, like, 
We're not losing the station because y'all want to say fuck. Do y'all do y'all do do y'all do guests and stuff? Yeah. Does the guests record? Hold it? Okay. Pre-record. Oh, guests. Yeah, I was gonna say because there's no way. And well, if they decide to have a live guest and the guest cusses, the DJ is held responsible because we and they signed a contract sure. saying that. We have a copy of the contract in the studio. We have a copy of all the words that can't be said, workarounds. Like, there, the studio looks somewhat like this with documents and then band posters and stuff. So okay. we have cool stuff, too, but I do have the, <laughs> y'all better pay attention. Uh -huh. Y'all go and learn today like that. The legal because. copy was clearly posted, Your Honor. I can't yeah. believe he said fuck shit, uh, goat. Yeah. Or something about, yeah. Well, no, because I... And talking I, about bands, you're going to get in trouble. Like, oh, my God. There's so many. There's so many. I messed up once. My old manager knows I messed up, and I got a week-long suspension for it. So I will say I'm not perfect. But I didn't realize there was a lyric in a Wednesday song that said piss. And so I, I played mean, it piss. without censoring it. And I that's mean, why it was only a week rather than like... How is piss a bad word? I have that no doesn't clue, make sense. Because... That one never made sense to me. Like, sometimes I'm like, ugh, powers that be. Okay. I'll deal with it. Who's deciding? The Who's FCC. Deciding? The, no, government. Yeah, the, the government. The yeah. government. Blame the government. Fucking always. Yeah. They cut down the tree by Venos, too, and I'm fucking hella mad about it. I saw that. Oh, my God. I'm I don't wrecked. keep up with Litterock scene too well, which is bad, because um, I definitely need to. But, like, there's so much. They're they're. Have you seen the stuff coming out of Fayetteville <coughs> with what's happening with like where Garhol Records office is and AMPM mm -hmm. bar? They're turning it into guess what? Student housing as always. Well, giant college. They yeah. probably yeah, they're going to take That's a lot over of the open land. Yeah, there's they've over enrolled the past two semesters. Money, money, money. Money, money, and, and like, it's a lot of fucking money. It's so much. It's not even a little bit. It's a whole yeah. shitload. It's so much. And, like, I'm almost done, so I can speak a little more freely. I graduate December 18th. I am out. Really? December 16th. Do yeah. you still work at the, at the, no? I'll give up my station managership. So what? Yeah, you have to be a student to be in student media, which is so, I'm like, ah. Even but, in the top brass, that's. Yeah. Huh. And so I, I have a very strong idea of who it's going to be, though. Yo, you and get to so, pick your predecessor? I have encouraged him to interview. Oh, gotcha. But the interviews with the media board, which is around 20 people. But Damn. I get to give my personal recommendation, and that's taken the most seriously. So many so rules, So pretty much, man. oh, God. College, college is just rules. Like, if college teaches you anything, it's how to be an employee and how to deal with a lot of right. rules. And Ugh. so... It's yeah. like my least favorite thing in life is rules. Oh, my God, same. No, I... I hate them so much. <laughs> oh, my God, no. And tell me about it. I'm writing a research paper right now that's, uh -huh. like, essentially a thesis. You want to talk about rules? That. Oh, really? That thing. Oh, my God. So I love the professor that's sponsoring it for me because I needed two hours. Like, this is why it happened. So rules, right? Even though I'm done with everything curricula-wise, I needed two more just random hours of school. To graduate. And I'm like, what the fuck? Just let me leave. Like, I've been here long two hours. enough. I've been here two hours today. What yeah. the fuck? <laughs> and so um, they were like, no, you have to have 120 hours to graduate. I was like, like bull fucking shit. So you okay. have to go find some, like, I worked in the cafeteria, now give me my hours it's or something? It's like, I have to do an independent study. Oh my God. Which is essentially a thesis without being qualified to do research, which is hell. Let me tell you, it's hell. Because the topic I want to do, I need to interview people. Mm. But And so I'm able to interview people, but I can't do surveys. I'm like, what? So I just have to get people to agree to talk to me, which okay. is so hard. Because I'm doing it on the death of legacy medias and how newspapers are changing oh, yeah. their models to survive. And so, and it goes with this other paper I'm writing for the senior writing requirement. Because, yes, you have to write a paper to graduate. Oh, yeah, yeah. I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> Much to my chagrin. My, um, <laughs> to the audio listeners, I'm rolling my eyes as it's far like, back in my head as possible. It's like when you go to, the, to third grade and they're like, write the thing on what you did this summer. Yes, it's that. <laughs> or you can't fucking leave. Yeah. Ever. Ever. They're You're like, here now. <laughs> they're like, write a paper on an ethical issue in journalism. 
And I'm like, um, there's so we many. You can't say piss on the radio. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Literally going to write fucking five with my pages. Ethics. Yeah. <laughs> write five pages on that. No, I'm doing mine actually on like how new news technology is causing old people to be more susceptible to misinformation. And and uh, robbery. What's that called? Yeah. Like hackers. Hackers yeah, and stuff like that. And so I'm doing it on that. And then I'm also doing my research paper. I'm interviewing like newspaper editors across the country. Damn. None of them want to be named. They do not want to be quoted don't. directly. Like, this job's fucking hell. Please yeah. save me. <laughs> they're more just like they're like you can talk about what we're doing, just don't pull direct quotes. I'm like fucking kidding me. Well, that's because like, like what I need I'm like, I could research the hell out of your papers and never have to talk to you. Like, I could just tool around on your site, figure out when the paywall pops up, figure out the cost of things, and I'd never have to interact with a person, and I could get this done a lot quicker had I known that. Right. But, no. Paywall for news. Paywall for news. Which is weird. It's Yeah. No, that's what I'm writing about. I'm writing about how, like, it discourages people. And that's why they sell ads to literally anything. Doesn't matter if it's fake or not. It, oh I've never God. seen a fucking real ad on a news site no. ever. No, it's always like I've noticed this. It's always ads for either internal things or companies uh-huh. that pay. Because so many, like, it's such a nuanced issue. It's why it's turning into a twenty-page research paper. Mm-hmm. Also hellish, but you know, turn this it's into so a documentary. Nuanced. Put it yeah, on Netflix. <laughs> Honestly, give me run me some money, Netflix, <laughs> please. But um. It's because all these local newspapers are being bought by big chains. Absolutely. And so then it's just national advertisers. It's that nothing local. That same thing's local. happened to everything. Venues. Yeah. It was a huge thing for oh venues. Oh, my God. Live Nation. They bought them up and then closed them all down. So they, you know, get yeah. to make the narrative or whatever. They get to skew the whole scene however they want yeah. to. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And charge you an absolute fucking well, fortune. Yeah. Merch cuts. Oh, they don't take merch cuts, but guess who's going to pay for that? The artists, you, us, everyone, yeah. Like that's so ridiculous. I was seeing that because I'm like, and it'll start small. It'll be like three cents artist reinduction fee. They'll they'll name it something crazy, and you're like, oh, well, it's going to the artist. You're like, Mm-mm. no, no, it's, it's gonna not. be a tax at the bar. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, they'll do that too for sure. Oh yeah, like it's like how Airbnbs, you get a cleaning fee, you get a like, <laughs> oh, this it's house like has thirty hardwood bucks floors. a night, but it's five hundred dollars to clean. And yeah. guess what? You'll never clean it right. Yeah, you'll it'll, never yeah. clean it right. <laughs> That's right. I I always find that so ridiculous. Like, my mom is amazing and getting our family, like, an Airbnb for my graduation. Because I have a house, but I'm like, I can't host y'all. I live with two other people and three yeah, cats. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not hosting y'all. All love, but, like, everyone's coming to my graduation, so no. And so my mom's trying to book, like, an Airbnb or VBRO, and she's yeah. like, this is a lot. I'm like, it's Fayetteville. Yeah. It's going to be a lot. And so... Maybe go just a little up. Yeah. No, go find, down. Find something in Missouri or something. Yeah, Missouri or like... Mad cheap. Yeah, Missouri's cheap. Go over to Oklahoma. That's cheap. Or Oklahoma, yeah. Y'all are literally We're right really, fucking there. <laughs> it's an hour to Stillwell. Is it Stillwell or Still... It's Stillwell. Stillwater's the one with OSU. I, I worked in Oklahoma for a summer and I still mix up their town names. It's okay. Doesn't, it's, it yeah. doesn't matter. It's no, Oklahoma. like my girlfriend's. No, yeah. yeah, no, my girlfriend's from there, and I literally yeah. know the town she's from, and that's it. I'm like, yeah. okay, I know Tahlequah. That's where I know my wife Tulsa. was from as well. Okay, Tahlequah or no, Oklahoma? No, 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 just Oklahoma. Oh God. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. The fact, no. There's so much with the Sooners joining the SEC. I stay out of sports completely. Oh, don't. don't I don't get do it sports. Going. My girlfriend does sports, and Dad, I'm like, do y'all have fun. No. No, my girlfriend gets to talk sports with my dad. That is how they get along. They there talk sports and medical things because she's a bio major. He's a doctor. I'm like, y'all have fun. I'm going to stay out of this conversation. And You're so, just asleep in the corner. Like, no, that was the most boring like, shit in the world. Like, yeah. Hulk shoe era. <laughs> like, just falling asleep. No. So they do that. And I'm like, y'all have fun. Like, she does so much. She... Right now, it's so funny. The little disclaimers I now have to give or like have to find out whenever I go places. If people own birds, I can't go to their house. Are you allergic to birds? I am not, but she works for a she works for Tyson in virology testing on all of the chicken that they import and export. And so she can't be around birds in any form. Like Weird. 
she, her boss will be driving to our neighborhood, sitting in her car outside our house with the windows down, making sure she doesn't hear birds or my girlfriend can't go outside. What? Too long. Mm -hmm. Um, She can't go to zoos anymore without work permission. She can't have, she can't even touch farm fresh eggs. That's the weirdest um, job in the world. Yeah. What the fuck? So what she does is they work with like... All these rules, man. Yeah, all these rules. This one I get. They're trying to make sure she doesn't bring in like salmonella or something and contaminate all the samples I get she's it, testing. Because that probably ruins millions of dollars worth of millions food. Millions of dollars in yeah. food and chicken. And like if they find certain then strains... Then they're just going to kill them on. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. So what she does, I'm like, okay, it's food safety. It's important. But like... I'm hosting a little Halloween shindig for KXUA, right? Like, little, just a little, we can't call it a party because we're a school thing, but a little shindig, a little social. If you're in the sorority, a social, a social you if you're in the sorority fraternity world, a function, you'll function. know what I mean. There you go. There's um, words to get around. Yeah. It. That's fine. And so I literally, like, we're having a costume contest. I'm like, do not bring live animals as part of your costume. Because the first thing, thing someone with a yeah, bird pops someone in, someone with a bird pirate. wants to be uh -huh. a pirate. I'm like, <laughs> no, no. And the thing is with KXUA and having so many people, sometimes you have to state the most obvious thing. Like, I don't think I should ever have to tell someone, hey, please don't cut a cord while it's plugged in. Please, please don't do that. You would, you would think. You would think. That's such yeah. a simple thing. And yet. It's like stickers on cars for airbags that aren't removable. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, um... Over spring break, I was filing a police report because someone cut a cord sure. in our studio, wow, caught our trash in. can on fire. Amazing. Like, literally, there are melt marks on the trash can. Amazing. And the outlets on, like, three sides of the room don't work. Yeah, there's only warnings because it's somebody did it. Yeah, there's only... Yeah. 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 And that's, so, that's why they're there. And so that's one of the funniest parts of being a manager is having God, to put in those things. Insane. Like, it was actually insane. I just feel like I'd be like an old school parent and be like, what'd we learn? Yeah. Hmm? Oh, no. no. Your fingertips sit... are black and your hair standing up. What'd you learn? I sent out, because this was spring break, and my last spring break, I sent out a litany of texts. I was like, you have 72 hours to turn yourself in or report your guest before I go to the police, and I will figure out who did this. Like, we are getting cameras in the studio. I am over it. This is not what I want to deal with. Like, I was mad. And they saw that side of me, and they straightened up. And the person whose guest it was fessed what? up. And oh, it was a guest. It was a it? guest. It was a guest. Just so for funsies. Now, so now we have a thing where I get all the guest names and student ID numbers. I'm surprised that wasn't yeah. already a. I am too. That's one that where I'm like, very that like, one's pretty obvious. Have you ever been into an old school radio station? It was like Fort Knox in those fucking places. I know. No, the one in Fayetteville. A locked door, and then the, a, a person with a security guard's gonna like look at your ID. Then you come in the thing. Then you go yeah. to the front desk, and then all the studios are locked as well. Like, yeah. those places are fortresses. No, that's how the one in Fayetteville is, like, the commercial ones. And, like, because I almost worked for them um, for, like, a little internship thing. And it was, like, you had to give your ID. Then you had to, like, you know, which rooms you were going to. And mm -hmm. I was, like, I don't know. So they were, like, okay, well, they'll meet you out here and then take you. And yep. I'm, like... Why is this more secure than the military? Like, <laughs> you ever seen the movie Airheads? It's like movie Airheads. From that yeah, thing. yeah, it is that. Oh my god, no! But I love cake today, even with the silly rule things. <coughs> like, it teaches you how to manage. I've noticed that. I'm like, wow, I am in charge of 70 kids. This is terrifying. And I call them kids. I am 23. Most of these kids are 19, yeah, 20. Yeah. They're they're my peers, but they're kids. They're kids. And they're there so, for the party. Yeah. Yeah. They're there for the fun stuff. They're literally yeah, just there to don't like be nobody's boss. Yeah. No, I'm there. I'm like, unfortunately, these are regulatory things well, I have see, to Kevin, do. Kevin, you can't just cut the cords yeah. on the power. You, you melted can't the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I and like I felt so bad because I, the DJ who brought them in, I was like, I am going to have to suspend you for two weeks. I am so sorry. God, that's so funny. Like. That guest is no longer See, allowed back. if that back. happens here in Crash Cast Studios, I laugh at Kurt. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> guess we got to get a new cable. And for me, it's like. And a trash can. For me, it's like, oh, my God. We are directly across the hall from where, like, my big boss but is. But don't you think that's what ruins these things? Isn't that part? That should be part of your thing. Yeah. The, all these rules is why we don't want to do this shit. Yeah. We just do things like this. And that's why, that's what I'm, like, trying to bring in more. I'm like, look, we have regulatory rules. 
rules at the university requirements. But, but yeah, we, don't want we to burn creative, the building down. have fun. And like we're doing more things now, like community building. Mm-hmm. I accidentally um, installed military structure and did not realize it. Mm-hmm. It was my girlfriend gave me the idea. And then she was like, oh, yeah, that's military structure, by the way. I'm like, mm-hmm. what? Really? Whoopsies. <laughs> but what I do is like. There's, like, community points and, like, the little small group with the most points. Every member gets 20 bucks to Block Street Records at the end of the semester. So it's, like, House Cup in that sense. It's like Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then I made it to where, like, big questions go to me. Normal, everyday questions I don't want to answer 80 times go to your staff lead. And each staff, like, yeah, paid yeah, yeah, member. Yeah, tier, tiered. Yeah, tiered. You know, yeah. And I'm like, I'm not dealing with how to teach a kid. This was a culture shock. These kids don't know how to buy music from iTunes. Yeah, they no. don't know how to buy yeah. music. They don't know how to put on a flash drive. Well, did you see that one? It's like that meme where someone's like, they printed out, they printed out the save logo. Yeah. So not only did they think they 3D printed a floppy disk, they didn't understand that the floppy disk image was the save button. Yeah. Like, holy fuck. I saw that. <laughs> I with these kids, I had to explain to someone how to move music. If you don't onto know, you don't know, drive. you know. And I was like, they just use their phones yeah. their whole life, you know? And, like, we can't stream from platforms, obviously, because that's, like, copyright really? infringement for the artists. We do you have, like, an open we source have, software or something? We have a ton of CDs sent to us by promoters. What the <laughs> fuck? No. So, you know how yours is all this? Ours well, is thousands of CDs. Did you CDs. see the news today? Walmart and Best Buy announced today that they're deleting physical media next year. Where am 2024. I? 2024. Jeez, where am I going to buy my blank CDs for DJs? <laughs> because we do CD shows where they burn it onto a disc. You're going to be all local bands soon. Yeah. Well, we have <laughs> which someone, is cool. We have someone specifically for that, which is fun. But we also get, so we get music from you promoters. You have someone who's their job to find all the local bands? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I hired him on as like a local music director. So we have... Music directors who deal with our national promoters because we get sent music. Can you from do links for labels. them? Yeah, yeah. I can okay. do links where they make like a box file gotcha. and share it, so we can share through like okay. SharePoint, Box, as long as someone Google owns Drive, the music. Dropbox. Yeah, gotcha. It just and, can't be like Spotify, Apple yeah, Music. No Spotify, Apple Music. We just have to own it. Title. <laughs> yeah. Ti- God, people still use that. Oh like, yeah, apparently. Yeah, and like. Um, essentially as long as you own it in some form, but also if these kids right. rip it from YouTube, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. don't care. I don't Files because most file. of the time I'm buying like really new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Don't ask, don't tell on that. Literally. I had one kid do it in front of me and I was like, I'm going to go to another room uh-huh. <laughs> and I expect that window to be closed when I come back, you know, I'm going to blow my nose and yeah. when I return. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I give yeah. them hints like that. I'm never going to be the type to be like, oh, my God, you can't do that. You're in so much trouble. I get it. And I'm like, because also I'm like, is it a money thing? Like, is it, are you able to afford it? Because if not, I'll just buy their music that week. YouTube I don't to care. MP3.com. Or yeah. just reach out. Most local yeah. bands will be like, sure, here's our save box. Yeah, like, like when I talked with Garhole Records, he was like, oh, y'all have a local position? I'm going to send you every single one of our releases ever. And we have a giant box file of there it now. Go. So we can pull anything from Garhole. And, like, we work with promoters at hold all on, the different... Hold on, yeah. Are you saying Gargle? Oh, no, Garhole. Garhole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure if y'all haven't heard of them. Oh, my no. gosh, no. So It's a solid fucking name, though. It is. Check it out. They Kurt do Garhole. Yeah, well, the guy who runs it is named Kurt. And so K-U-R-T, if it's the same. It is. And... um. He does like the alternative stuff. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And then he also has Tape Dad, which is actually like cassette tapes and stuff. So he's like keeping awesome. that medium alive. And they're so like T- tapes are up. Yeah, tapes are, are up. And I'm like, yeah. we had C- we had CDs up for a bit. Now we have the vinyl surge. Vinyls now cassettes everything. Are com- vinyls you everything. You get hooked in vinyl. Yeah. It's fucking over. Yeah. Oh, oh, tell me about uh, it. Yeah, I don't um, know. I'm in. I'm there. The first time I went to Control Records, <laughs> I spent so much money. They gave me a canvas bag for free to yeah. carry all of my records in. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And granted, Control was started by one of the first people to work at KXUA. So wow. I was like, I am going to go and I'm going to spend a lot of money. And I knew it. And I was like, holy cow. Like... I worked in a record store, so obviously I'm a little biased, and I love vinyl. Um, 
right now my girlfriend does woodworking which is awesome she is your very cliche butch lesbian like imagine a butch so what lesbian the fuck that's is she her. not doing <laughs> bird right? flus fucking woodworking yeah. fucking she can build anything like she built dr me, seuss she built me a fold-out desk like it genuinely lays into the wall and uh-huh. then folds out whenever like I a murphy it. desk yeah yeah and bitchin'. And so we got a old timey like record player that's in the console with like eight track Fuck cassette yeah. uh-huh. radio and she's all the wiring's good but mm-hmm. it's made with this like kind of plywood that's just not super high quality not going to hold together well so she's like going to redo that for me I'm like this is this is so probably nice. MDF or some yeah. shit yeah and that's what particle board that's what it is yeah. particle board yeah. see she knows she knows the terms and if I hear them again I'll know it's <laughs> yeah. right um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so so she does that like she there really is not much she doesn't do like truly Badass. and so it's awesome like she was a dj last semester and like she does a dad rock show if that makes sense so she did like her parents favorites and kind of like a throwback thing and that was really fun and she just didn't have time this semester but she may start it back up what are kids parents throwbacks is that like okay. the 90s would that 90s. be like Nirvana? god like, damn it okay so well okay, so i'm no. thinking like led zeppelin That's the my, beatles rolling parents, stones yeah, <laughs> yeah our parents are a decade apart so my parents are in our, their 50s her parents are in their 40s wow so her dad's throwbacks and like just jams in general is like Divorced Dad Rock. So, yeah. like, Shine Down, Three Days Grace. Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. That's yeah. my mom, 100%. My mom <laughs> loves Pearl Jam. <laughs> like, my mom's music taste is Indigo Girls, Pearl Jam, Fleetwood Mac, The Who. Fleetwood Mac, The Who. Yeah. Hey, I just saw The Who two years ago. Oh, my gosh. They're so fucking awesome. Still. Yeah. Like, she in their would, 70s. She would pay ass. so much money to go to that. My mom, bless her heart, did not <clears throat> realize that Indigo Girls is, in fact, a very, like, lesbian band. Yeah. Um, because you know when she saw them, it was the '80s, and there's not tech to figure that mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. So she brought a guy to go see Indigo Girls with her, like on a date, and he was the only guy there. I believe it. And they were down at like the Texas fairgrounds and everything in Fort Worth, and literally the only guy. And she's like, like she was so ashamed, but she was <laughs> jamming out and. Fleetwood Mac, or well, Stevie Nicks is coming here yep. next year. I did not get tickets in time. Sold out damn near immediately. Yeah. yeah. I really That's wanted ridiculous. to, but I was like, it's because it, she did Ticketmaster, so yep. it's all scalpers. No thanks. And while I would love to buy my mom tickets now it's for that. it's dollars a ticket. Yeah, yeah. I can't afford that. I am but a college kid for now. I can only say that for two more Don't, months. I, but, but you shouldn't want to. No. If this, this shit only stops if people just quit buying them. Then Stevie yeah. Nicks comes and there's, well, they sold all the tickets, but guess what? 17 people showed up. Yeah. Because they're the only ones that got the actual tickets. Because, like, with Ticketmaster, Ticketmaster is awful. Oh, don't even get me fucking started. No, it pisses me off to my core. It makes me insane with rage. Yeah. No. I would burn that fucking place to the ground if I knew where it was. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's genuinely (laughs) so awful. The problem is, it is everywhere. But it's everywhere. And, Mm. like, so much of just Fayetteville scene, thankfully, isn't inundated with that. Yeah. Like the amp up in, um, like it's Walmart. But you can amp. buy tickets from them, though. Yeah, you can you buy can tickets. You can walk up and get physical the tickets. Venue. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I love. That's the thing. I think and you like, can do that from Simmons too, but yeah. it's only on like one fucking day a week, and like between this hour and this hour, and everybody's at work. Yeah. They have a box office, but it's only open. It's I can't remember, but it's really stupid. Yeah, no. With the Georges and the Amp, you can buy physical tickets, and if you go online, it's StubHub. It's not Ticketmaster. It's not Ticketmaster. Like you can get like I I am queen of the lawn concert. I don't need to be up at front. I don't need to be barricade. Oh, the the so the lawn at Amp is great. Like the I mean, view is awesome. Whoever built that had to build the Dosecchi's. You want to know same as the one who in Texas. did the furniture installation? My girlfriend, nice. um, quite literally, she also so she does that over the summer. I haven't summers. been to the amp yet. I've driven past okay. it a handful of times. You should but go. I it's, there's nothing. I'm, it's really I'm, awesome. I'm like, there's nothing there for me. No, no, they they don't bring in the artists that are kind of my scene most of the time. Yeah. Like it's a lot of dad rock. I've had one or two where I'm like, ah, but then it's like, is it worth the fucking six hour round trip? Yeah. The, this that yeah. the round trip. Right, all that stuff. That's the worst. That is yeah. genuinely the worst part of it. They do not have good parking infrastructure. Nowhere ever does. And yeah, like that's just a part of concert going. I feel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's no, true. 
was it was I've seen some good shows there. Like I saw Hailstorm there, which oddly enough she came to Arkansas. Um, and I don't then even know what that is. Hailstorm's like she You're was like nineties. Okay, she's like Lizzie Hale, like nineties rockish. Huh. I. So I'm I don't from know. the 90s, so that, yeah. it's weird that I wouldn't well, know it's that. Not from the 90s. It's not. Oh, it's like yeah. 90s inspired. 90s oh, okay, inspired. Okay. Like, she's been doing it probably That's since like mid-2000s. That's crazy that the 90s 2000s. are an inspiration now. I know, it's very strange. Like, I was born in 2000, so like... Right which, there. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> I actually yeah. lived through all the 90s, and it was okay. fucking... It was rad. It's just weird when you're like, oh yeah, that's my... Mom's favorite band. I'm like, damn, that was like all my best friend's favorite band. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Actually. My, my parents, my mom didn't really get into music, quote unquote, until like high school. Yeah. And then my dad did That's not have. That's typically when it finds you. Yeah. You know? And then my dad didn't have time for music in the 90s. He was in medical residency. So he is the like. So he listens to like classical and shit. He, yeah. Oh, he loves Mozart his film fucking, scores. Uh-huh. He's like a film score guy, like Hans Zimmer. And then, um,. My, he's also like his family is one of those. Well, his dad was military. Okay. And so they were a cable testing family. So then he got every single tech early. He also got Guns N' Roses new album, like their debut early. And he lived in the time of cruising. So the oh, 80s, hell yeah. like 80s, early 90s were his college cruising years. Was shit. And so he would go cruise and blast that. And people would literally bring stop that shit back. and be like, what are you, what listening, are you listening to? to? No, cruising this would be so fun. Like, it's I, the funnest thing. I, I used to do it. It yeah. was around when I was a kid. We used to do it all the time. Yeah. That was him, like his college years, which he went to U of A. So like. So nostalgic. It you makes just drive in a circle and just have fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, you just we watch need that. people do burnouts or crash <laughs> or just. Listening to dope ass tunes. Yeah. My buddy had a fucking intercom on his truck. Oh my god. And when we would see a family with children, I would hide in the seat and it was just him and his girlfriend. So they can see them. They can't see me down in the seat. And I'm on the thing, I'm like, I'm a talking truck. And the kids would be like, Whoa. And I'd be like, You're in a green car with a thing because I you know, see it and be like, We're gonna prank them. The funnest shit in the That's world. That's so fun. No, I if my car had an intercom, uh, it would go a little differently. <laughs> Motherfucker! <laughs> I am, I am a road rage road rage queen, and I have to watch it because I flipped four people off on the way up here. <laughs> road no. rage. I didn't do that. <laughs> it is. Oh my god! No. He, he answered the phone. I was like, I've flipped off four people. This day sucks. <laughs> yeah. No. People in Little Rock can't drive. It's People. today, uh, fucking, they are on some extra bullshit because getting yeah. here was a fucking nightmare. Oh my God, no. No one would let me over to take the correct exit no, to no, get no. here. I'm like, fuck y'all. Yeah, you like, just have to exist you. in the proper exit. Yeah. yeah. And so I just took one exit up and turned because Turn I was around. like, I'm not doing that. Um, oh. Yeah. Where they all keep funneling yes. down. They never let you over. No. You have to bully your way in. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm scared of y'all. Uh-huh. And so, and I lived in Nashville, which has the worst drivers of anywhere I've ever I'll lived. take it over this place. That's valid. But like, I remember this was when I was 18, a very different person, significantly more angry with a lot less outlets. Sure. And this absolute like buffoon <laughs> like idiot B- buffoonery <laughs> yeah, like, actually buffoonery in this nice escalate i'm in my tiny little jeep i had at the time like i'm scared almost just side swipes me almost runs me off the road and i rolled my window down I'm like, are you that fucking stupid and mm. this guy just rolls his window down he's like be quiet <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> and i just rolled my window up and rolled on <laughs> and i was like fine oh my god I was like, fine, okay, you almost run me off the road. That's a baller-ass way <laughs> to tell is. someone to shut up. Like, that was. Whoa. I was like, I was 18 and could have used that, so I'm like, okay. Might have to use that one. Yeah. Be quiet. And roll <laughs> and back up. Maybe put it in our accent, be yeah. quiet. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I was like, fine, but no, Nashville. So, I lived there for two years. I went to college up there at first. Okay. Don't do it. Nash Just Vegas. don't. Nash Vegas. I went there. I've had a lot of fun in that city. Yeah, me too. It was a fun time. But that's actually how I got into like DIY and everything. Absolutely. Because there are so many house shows in random it's people's like, basements of like college they have kid a, bands. Their big venue is called The Basement. Yeah. yeah just, oh my God, I miss The Basement. That one's still open. Yeah. Basement and Basement East came back. They closed everything on Cannery Row. Yeah. Which made me so sad. Those were some of my favorites. Um, but no. 
I did like a little music blog that was everything but country in Nashville because I went to ah, Belmont. There you go. That's that's quite the angle. Yeah. <laughs> and it did pretty well. Um, but I went to Belmont, which was really fun. Music school, but also a Christian school. So it was like yeah, a yeah. weird vibe. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. Under us, okay, but you better not listen to Five Finger Death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um, usually, like the kids there, they were either a music kid or they were a church mm. kid. Mm -hmm. And they never really meshed. So obviously I was in the music kid crowd. And so many just random house shows. Like you, you know, parties upstairs, concerts in the basement. I'm like, get here. Like, what is this? You know, rad. it was really cool. But then the pandemic hit and I was like, this school is too expensive for me to do through Zoom. Like, I am not doing this. And yeah. so I dropped out like completely. I was like, bye college. I'm good. Then came here and went right back to college. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I lived at my parents for, like, the first few months of the pandemic. Oh, so I was, okay. like, just, I'm, like, I'm not paying rent up there. I'm not going to ask y'all to help me. Like, it's expensive. I don't want to be in a big city. Because, like, this was the dawn of COVID where we really didn't know how bad right, it was right. going to be. Those first and my couple. dad's a doctor. So I was, like, I'll go live with the doctor who's running the COVID response. That feels yeah. safer. And so I did that. And then my parents were, like, you need to get back to school. I was, like, hey. Gee, I'll thanks. go to U of A. Yeah, and they yeah. were like, well, if you go in Arkansas, we'll cover. I'm like, cool. Okay, yeah. time to go to U of A. And so um, I'm very grateful they did that. And then I moved to Fayetteville in like June of 2020 and then started school in August. And you're already about to graduate? Yeah. Damn. Well, they took – so they took – 50 plus hours from away from me from the last place the last like they place. did not let anything slide state transfer yeah, yeah it's bullshit oh it was such bs and yeah. luckily now the head of the department of the j school and i he's overseeing my research so i ranted to him and like he and i have a pretty good relationship to where i'm like i've seen him mad enough to where he'll cuss i can cuss and it's fine i was like the transfer process here is fucking ridiculous like i straight up said that to him one day he's like oh i know i was a transfer i'm like okay you feel yeah. my pain like you get it because i was set to graduate early from belmont so i would have graduated uh, in december of 21 rather than spring of 22 just stuck it out. i know but the pandemic was so awful and like that yeah. school was not worth it especially for music too yeah oh Shit, my god that was my whole took it all away that was my whole career path like i was gonna <laughs> go be a music writer and cover music and like it's changed some i still obviously want to do that like music is still the number one priority. Yeah. But well, like, like go to festivals and be like, yeah. the queen on the scene kind of. Yeah. Kind of like get a media pass, try mm -hmm. to interview bands. Right. Do more of the like, here's what's happening in the scene. Kind of like state of the scene type stuff. And then get artists to actually sit down and talk with me about like inspirations behind things. Sure. And like what's going on. Like I've had, I had an interview. It's been two years. Yeah. Where's that next record? That yeah. Kind of shit. That yeah. kind of shit. But uh -huh. like in a more authentic way, right, where right, like right. I know them. And so like, I've had that sometimes with bands. Like there was one where I figured out the drummer had had a huge medical thing and hadn't been able to play for a ton of years. And mm. then they were doing their first show back. So I covered that and like was able to bring in that context and like, <laughs> interview him about like the impact of that and stuff and then like that's more what i care about rather than like when are you giving us more music because like right. i never rush artists yeah, i'm like who cares? who cares just give us music when you also, want also like the good. third album who really yeah you know? what, are you, what are you doing yeah there's oh like seven God. bands who get better after their third album. <laughs> there's very few being like, a dude in a band i can uh, i can i can very much say it's very rare that the band just keeps getting better and better yeah no there's I'm, a handful I'm actually, I'm going to test that theory now and listen to stuff on the drive back and listen to the first I think three it's, albums. I think it's not them. I think it's you aging. Yeah. You're not attached to the thing as much as you were. That's And you kind of live in the past. We love nostalgia. Oh, my gosh. Because it was, that's when times were different and simpler and I was, well, you were a kid. Yeah. Of course it was easier. Yeah. Oh, you know? my God. No. Like, the stuff from my, like, junior high playlist, I'm like, sometimes this is really nice. Like, like you didn't pay rent yet. Yeah. yeah. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't pay rent. You don't have to know what taxes are. Like, yeah. so, Although they should. Cause, oh, my God. Holy right? fuck. They throw you right into that one. Oh, you're an adult now. Well, guess what? Yeah. Welcome. Like, I got my first job at 18. 
And they were like, fill out this form. And I literally texted a picture of it to my mom. And I was like, what do I do? What is this? What is this? Because I'm still <laughs> a dependent. It's like, pretty sad, though. 100%. My parents are phenomenal. And they're like, we get you through undergrad. And then you have like three months transition and then figure it out. And that's an amazing gig. Like, that's a huge privilege. It's pretty spot on. That's yeah, spot on. I'm like, they're really good to me in that way. Oh, I can't take a gap year. <laughs> yeah. I took a gap semester. Uh, yeah, and they were well, like, hmm. It was kind of like side eye. Look at it. And then... And right now they're helping my brother through law school. This so. feels buffoonerish. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, this is some buffoonery, which is one of my favorite <laughs> phrases. I say I have like I it's have a little good one. catch I love phrases. That word. <laughs> so but no, it's honestly like I don't know, Northwest Arkansas no, the music scene up there has been significantly kinder to me hmm. and kinder to just rookies coming in and wanting to figure it out than anything Nashville could ever like hope to be. Well, Nashville's set. Yeah. Nashville's they don't, they set. Don't they don't need. Yeah. And they don't need they don't anyone. They need to cater to anything. No. And so like with the whole hop out thing we did, that was just such a good experience. I love hop out DIY. I will shout them out every time. Like Vaughn Mims started it. Mm. And. Vaughn's awesome. I Vaughn? was like, Vaughn is a great dude. And then uh, his partner, Jordan, did all of the graphics. And, like, she works in advertising and stuff. So she had, like, so much. She just had so much, like, experience with that that she just made the best, like, branded look for it. And then we got a ton of partners in on it. And it was, I think, 300-plus people came out to the show. Dope. Which was awesome. That's a like, lot of people. That's a lot yeah. of people. And it was like a George's backroom show. Like we got the back room, not the For front room. All local bands. They were all Fayetteville or Little Rock. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Second Life, we're homies. Second, Second Life. Life yeah. I was like Second Life and Peach Blush are from and Peach Blush here, yeah. and then Chrono Wizard, Modeling, and Sad Palomino are from Fayetteville. Yeah. So. Yeah, and like they let Cake Two A do interviews, and then that'll live on our site, and so nice. it's like we're trying to do stuff that like interconnect everyone if that makes sense like mm, kind of absolutely like yes we're a radio station but we're gonna start doing like tiny desk concerts and like beautiful which i have to email legal and be like hi i sent you Better an email two no months swearing ago thing. yeah i put an email in two months ago i need you to write this contract for me or i like i don't know what to do because we have to get a contract done that essentially protects us from artists uh -huh. suing us it's very not likely because we're doing this with local bands. Right. And like all of Just the local bands. Just happy to be bands, here. Thanks like, for the Little Caesars. <laughs> yeah. Like all of the local bands, but it has to say we can't pay them because uh, we're poor. We right, can't right. do that. Mm -hmm. We're the least funded of the student medias. Absolutely. So like, you know, um, we call the ourselves. The Instagram lady makes more than we do. Yeah. 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 No, like um, we call ourselves the redheaded stepchild of U of A. Like we are that. And the basement so, kids. Yeah, we are. Oh, my God. That's such a better way to put it. We are the basement kids. Come crawling like, out of the thing all pale, holding a coffee. Like, what's <laughs> going on? No, because our office, which, granted, it's for a reason, but our office is, like, completely separate from the other student medias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that also means we <laughs> don't have to share an office with five other organizations. Nice. And so I'm like, Get your own God. spot. Get our own spot. We've yeah. got our st live studio, our recording studio, <coughs> and then a back room office with literally... Hundreds on hundreds of CDs. A tiny desk thing is pretty rad. Yeah. I really, like, because our, our table's probably, like, twice this length. I would for, assume, like, yeah. For, like, the studio. So, I'm like, we can gather a band around it. And they'll be pre-recorded just because I want to give the bands a chance if they get really nervous to not have that recorded in live. And, right. like, kind of make them look good and make us look good. And also. Yeah. It's beneficial both ways. Yeah. For sure. And, yeah. And so, we definitely, like. I just need legal to get on board. I'm mm. like, I will. Everyone else is. Even, like, heads of the department. I'm just like, legal, have write us a contract. My brother's in law school. I'll hit him up. Be like, hey, I know you're really busy because you have, like, a one-year-old, but you should take the time to do this. So. Please, please. 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 That's nice. <laughs> please. I'm literally your only sibling. Like, <laughs> this is all I ask of you, you know. But worst case, I will have him, like, help me out. I think he did okay in contract law. I don't know. Who knows? He's a 2L. He's like, I'm just in bird law. Yeah. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> he loves, you know, the whole birds aren't real conspiracy. Oh, yeah. He literally has merch from that. Like, that's, Love it. that's a whole a thing. A lawyer who's like, birds aren't real. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he's, the thing is, I'm like, 
law school makes a lot of sense for him, but he's also done like stand up previously and like he's a big jokester. I'm like, you are not okay. going to be able to hold it together in the newsroom, not newsroom, but like the courtroom. Like you're going to have details of some case and you're just going to have to like. Don't make a joke. Not make Don't a joke. say the joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's going to be a struggle for him. I know it will, but. I have those moments. You know. Yeah, he. I think we all do. Oh. Don't say the thing you want to say. Just don't say it. I, I get in meetings sometimes. I'm like, I can't say that. Like, I'm in meetings with, like, the heads of departments and, like, chairs of yeah, organizations. They don't think anything's and, like, funny. They, no, yeah. not at all. They don't laugh. Not at all. And I'm just like. The joy has been know. stripped from their life. <laughs> <laughs> They're running a college department. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And so it's just one of those things where I'm like, it's. College radio is so much fun, though. Like, we we love it up there. It's really been one of those things that, like... But it's a big, goofy time. Oh, it's see. a big, goofy big time. Like, we have so many different group chats. Like, um, we oh have one Lord. that's just, like, a social chat. Because we have, like, info chat where, like, this is big announcements. Y'all can chit-chat in the other one. And, like, Death Grips came to Fayetteville, right? Yeah. And that show went disastrously. Mm, we know. Oh, y'all saw like s- literally it's on stereo gum and I had like a lot of people that were there that were friends that were like, yeah. I work at Vino's and so I, like as it's happening, I'm like, oh shit, hey y'all, something's going on in Fayetteville. And yeah. turn the phone around and my friends are like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, they just kept throwing glow sticks at MC Ride and everything, and like they got hit enough to where they just walked off stage and never came back. Yeah, yeah, I saw. And I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. Well, he walked but, off, and then he came back. Yeah. And then he got hit again, and then that was... That was it. Yeah. And it's such a bad look for us, because there are actual people in the scene trying to bring in touring artists and, like, make it bigger uh, and better. That's, and then that happens, and I'm like... Mm, yep. Lovely. Like... Nice little hurdle. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like, we have Bully coming to town on the 25th, and then... um. A giant dog is coming on the twenty seventh. And people don't understand like media or not. I've yeah. been I've been doing music for twenty plus years and yeah. they talk. And yeah. it gets around real quick. If somewhere sucks, those acts that are in that realm, they will know about it. Yeah. Damn near immediately. That pretty much ruined our chance it, it of can, building our hop hip hop scene. It like, can it can. Well, it definitely put a big old fucking wedge in there that now you have to try to like yeah scrape away the and bullshit I feel bad. Like, well let's okay well and now it's like well now we can't have glow sticks so yeah. like what's that next venue, water bottles that venue is newer too jj's awesome. live i haven't been there yet because their ticket prices are they had a budget for me jj's like, was jj's that live never heard of it it's so it used to be so you know like there's jj's grill yep which is the restaurant that's this what i is thought owned it was by the same company okay. same people they had um, they had, um, like a beer garden. It's a former brewery. Oh, gotcha. And then they turned it into a music venue because the brewery didn't work out over the pandemic. So they yeah, like yeah. shut it down, transformed it, which is honestly That's a very cool. good idea. Yeah. But the tickets run you $70, 80 yeah. and it's standing room only. And the only options for seats are tables that cost thousands Oh, or like a fuck. thousand because it's per seat. Like you get the whole table. Oh, you got to buy the whole table. But it's like eight to ten people. So they expect you to split it. Bet- I'm like, I don't have that many friends. Like I don't have a social group that big. And so I'm like, yeah, I can't. Twenty twenty three. Yeah, I was like, I am a homebody. Nobody has friends. Yeah. And so I was like, it's just not a very like accessible venue in that sense, and very mm. much like you're either going to be crowded into GA. Or you can pay a ton of money. To sit. To sit. And, like, I like having the option to sit if it's available because, like, I broke my foot over the summer. Yeah. And, like, like I'm sitting. not meant for mosh pits. I almost broke my ankle in one. <laughs> so I'm like, I am not meant for those. But I do, like, I get the appeal of being up front. I've definitely done barricade shows before. But I'm like. Yeah, up front was great. Yeah. Then you get, like, in your mid-30s and you're like, ah, I don't want a beer anymore. I don't want these. Find me by kids. the soundboard. Yeah. yeah, by the soundboard. I'm like these little kids need to stop touching me. Oh no 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 no! They'll punch your face off. Oh oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. My first concert ever, I got punched in the neck. Absolutely. And it it was Cage the Elephant. It's yeah. not even a hardcore band. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. No, this girl was on something. <laughs> Literally the quietest song in the entire set. 
She out, just starts fucking. And she just out of nowhere <laughs> slams me in the neck. And I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And I'm 16. My mom is terrified She's to like, drop me was off a at bug a concert. On you. <laughs> yeah. I'm with like my two friends. My mom is terrified to drop me off at my first concert. She sat in her car in the parking lot the whole time. She was like, it sounded really cool. shut it in the neck cool. the first time. Just punch. And Hilarious. I looked at that girl and I was like, damn. And I looked at security because I'm on barricade. Security's right there. Yeah. And I just looked at him. The I was day. like, I shrugged and they got her out. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, wow. This was 2016. So this was like not okay. you're just like i mean you're in the front row what do you want me to do yeah, about it but it was like it was a five band bill and none of them were hardcore bands it was like silver sun pickups cage the elephant it's a like dope show it was so cool for a first show like bare hands I that's your the first Odyssey. show yeah yeah oh you just said that yeah no it, didn't even it dawn was on me like damn that is a good first yeah show. it was insane it was in south haven mississippi which is an hour from where i grew up nice. and i'm like Mississippi. Why? Yeah, I can't. I say Mississippi really weird. I don't say it correctly, but like, um, I'm like, why? It's like essentially if you go Memphis and then down, yeah, like twenty ish minutes. So it's really not bad because Memphis shows. I've been to. I actually haven't seen a Memphis show, which I'm surprised by because that's only an hour. But I'm like, I didn't need to go to like Beale Street Music Festival nah, or like I'm not. I've never been. And they're not even doing it this year. Like, yeah, RIP or next year. Yeah. 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 So they shut it down for the 2024 season and like restructure, restructure, find out how to make it a fest. Yeah. One day thing. Thousand dollar tickets. That's what they'll end up doing. And it's like, what's that's what it all is. Yeah. I think very soon that's going to be most shows. That's what I'm terrified for because I'm like, I can't DIY or. You know, the big stuff will yeah. all be festivals. And I mean, format festival is already changing that for like Northwest Arkansas. Like that's the first festival we've gotten. It's a three-year contract. So next year is year three. And then they'll decide whether or not to re-up. I Our hope they Uniwa do. just played it. Who was it? Uniwa? Yeah. Yeah. And then like they brought in like Alanis Morissette and Modest Mouse. He played and, like, during both of those, yeah. right? Yeah. Literally, yeah, <laughs> he was the DJ playing during both of them, and still yeah. had a good crowd. Go uni, yeah, Fuck because, yeah, dude. Because also, like we, so we got one media pass for it, which was awesome. I was happy we just got a media pass. I did not take it. I gave it to our social media girl because I was like, "This is your literal job," and I would be selfish if I took that. <laughs> You're like, so, I really want it, but I really want uh-huh. it. But like, one, there's not food for me. I have food allergies, so like, <clears throat> there's nothing airborne. Don't worry. But like, there's not gonna be food for me. You don't get to leave and come back. Right. Like, I'd go for the last few hours so I could see the last acts, but I'm not gonna get the full festival experience because there's no food for me. And right. so, um, and so I was like, you take it. And she wrote out this wonderful piece. It's on our website, which is just kxua.com. Mm-hmm. Um, I am gonna shout it out. Um. But it's like a literal play-by-play of every single day. And I'm like, she sent it to me. And I was like, I'm not going to lie. I probably won't read all this. Give me the highlight paragraphs you want me to edit. And so I did. And there was no glare. There were no glaring errors in general. And she did such a great job on it. But, like, there were so many logistical issues. They had to evacuate because of weather. The next day it started an hour late. Like, yeah. Sets got cut short. And, like, they did the best with what they had. Because it also moved from being out at a rural airport to then being at uh, the Momentary, which oh. is also turning into a music venue, which I think is really interesting. interesting. I just saw Always and Julia Jacqueline there. That was a really fun show. Like I, they're like lighter indie, but like I'm like Always is a Canadian band. How much money brought them to Arkansas? And like Depends. Julia Jacqueline's yeah. Australian. If it's so a one off, like, probably a fuck ton. Yeah. If they're on tour, it's, you know, tour Always rate. was on tour ish. Yeah. Like they're in their rest between two different legs. And then Always. Julia Jacqueline's not on that's, tour. That's all Arkansas usually gets is the in betweens. Yeah. yeah. Which we're on the map shows is bringing in more artists to Northwest Arkansas. He's doing a great job with that. Like he got the Welcome it's to tough. the Night Vale podcast to come in. I was like, that's. That's got a gig. cult following, but yeah, yeah. It's a tough gig. Yeah. Arkansas is a flyover state. It is. Artists don't. <clears throat> you see market. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, no. <clears throat> and like, that's why I want to get KXUA like on the radio map more. sandwiched between two massive c- cities. Yeah. 
where they're like, well, I can just go make all that money. Yeah. I don't I'm have like, to stop here. Tulsa is there. OKC is where most of them are going to go, though. Dallas. And then Dallas. Yep. And then Memphis. Memphis. And they're Especially like, oh, just go. Shit. Yeah. So they'll just do Tulsa, Texas shows, mm-hmm. open in Memphis. And Nashville like, even, even though it's a little further, but yeah. still, it's right there. It's like, it's right there. And so they don't think about us. But I'm like, there are so many people here that, like, care about the music yeah. scene. And like, or if you, they do come here, they want ten grand more. Yeah, are like fuck. It's like we can't afford that. Like this forty dollar ticket at a DIY venue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I think I'd cry. No, most of the like, most of the shows I've been to, it's like donate what you can. Mm-hmm. So usually what I do, I'm like, there are gonna be some people that send one dollar because that's all they can do. So I'll yeah. just send like twenty. Yeah. Because I'm like, eh, if I can afford it, I'll do it. And like with Anvil Fest, that's what it was. It was like, um. With Rafe, who does, like, Anvil recording sessions, and... It was Name Your Price? It was Name Your Price. It was what? literally just, he put on the event, donate what you can. And Damn. I was like... And so I asked him, I was like, what would you charge for tickets? He was like, oh, I don't know, pay what you can. So I go ask his best friend, because I'm like, um, I'm going to figure this out. And then I was like, oh, probably just, like, ten bucks. And I was like, it was a two-day fest. For an entire festival, for, $10. Like, <laughs> and, like, it was, like, not an entire, like... Well, it was a fest in a sense because it was, like, at Cash Create in Bentonville. And, like, if we run over time, I have no worries. I really, oh, what time is that? See, I don't even think about it. See, really hard stop is probably going to be, like, three. But I can leave. I can leave town whenever. I just think about traffic waves whenever I leave. But, um, so don't worry about it. But with him it was like a fest in the sense of two days long at least four to five bands per night and then they're playing in one room and they got different sponsors to have tables and mm. so cakes we got added on literally not even 24 hours before the show did they charge for the tables i think so okay well that at I least they think, did that well maybe maybe for like the non-bands yeah. I think because the bands got to have their merch tables, but then on the maps had a table and couldn't make it. And he was like, Hey, do you want my table? And it's like 7 p.m. the night before the fest. We have no merch, no posters. I'm like, Just bring some stickers. Literally, on a thing I literally and a, and a brought table. stickers. I brought a notebook for people to sign up for like a newsletter uh-huh. we're about to launch. I'm like, I'll just talk about it. And we're set next to Arkansas House Records. They've got a TV with headphones so you can listen to their <laughs> artists. They've got all, and I'm like, And they're so sweet. Like, they just, they were prepared. I was not. And so I'm just sitting there like. We know all about that. Yeah. We went to a retro expo. Oh, my gosh. We showed up with mostly donated shit. We were like, uh, we'll just put some stuff out. And turns out people love VHS tapes, though. Okay. That, my parents have so many, so. Well, if if you ever need to offload them, apparently there's fucking money in VHS tapes. Okay. He just told me uh, cars, VHS Copy of Cars goes for eighteen hundred dollars. I need to raid my parents' TV cabinet go, because go start looking. Um, <laughs> we have, s- yeah. Sorry, mom. Uh, if you're listening, I will be doing that next time I come home because find that old box. There's so many. No, we have like the old like. My mom is very anti tech. My mom did not upgrade to an iPhone until 2018. She Damn. Had, she had a Razer flip phone oh, with no. spare parts. No. <laughs> my mom doesn't have social media. She and my that dad, I get. Sh- yeah, she and my dad share a Fucking Facebook. Fucking hate social media. Yeah, <laughs> she and my dad literally share a Facebook. She doesn't own a laptop. She's never owned a laptop. Like she literally just uses the home computer or the one at her job. And like she's so, and I kind of love it. Like she just yeah, now, she's not she, distracted. She doesn't really understand how Spotify works. So she has her old phone, which doesn't have a SIM card anymore, have all her Spotify stuff, and her real phone. That she can call people from and everything That's has so everything funny. else. That's so funny. And like, she she got like these Bluetooth headphones, but they also come with a cord, and she doesn't understand. She Bluetooth, plugs so the cord she in every time. That's cord. funny as fuck. <laughs> like, I love my mom. She's so like she's so anti tech, and it's kind of nice because like in my career, I'm forced to deal with tech every day, all day, every all day, day, every day. Like social media, all of that, and like Welcome. I enjoy it, but it's like. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, but you can't get away from it no. when you want to. Oh, my God, no. Or you become so fucking addicted, which is more my issue, Yeah. that you even when you want to take, like, oh, I'm just going to hang out tonight. No, you're going to scroll on, on TikTok. Dinner's made. Yeah. Just sifting through yeah. bullshit. Oh, my cat's TikTok famous. Tell oh, me about it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, look, look at this guy building this credenza. 
Yeah. Like the fuck I need to watch this at <laughs> 11 o'clock at night. No. Why? I'm like, I can't get away from TikTok. My cat has, how many are we at now? Um, my cat's genuinely famous. She has 112.1 thousand followers. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. So she watches TV. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Like, Yo, can your cat do a plug for a crash cast? No, literally, I will make her. Like, like when this episode drops, the cat should watch crash no, cast. Because Look at that shit. Oh, your cat watches TV. Yeah. Chirping at it. She, she chirps. <laughs> like. That's awesome. Oh. Oh, like it knows for real, for real. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> no, she's a very weird cat. That one had 3.1 awesome. million views. What the fuck? <laughs> the first one I showed you had 9.6 million views. And I don't monetize this at all. Like, this is genuinely just for Man, fun. That can't be paying the fucking bills. Fuck all no. that. <laughs> I need to. But the thing is, the only videos that do well are of her making the noise. And now we have two other cats that she does not Make get along with. Make a fucking t-shirt that's her face and just says MIP or something. Yeah. And boom, boom. rent's no. paid. Honestly, I'm going to once I have time outside of school. Oh, that, that'd be. Because I'm like, I could make so much Let money. Let me find something. Yeah. Dude, my dog. Oh, my God. You start putting Odin's <laughs> ass on there. My God, no. And my other cat plays fetch. She genuinely plays fetch. And so I need to get a video of her doing it. But you can throw something for it. She'll just bring it right back. Pet animals on Instagram, like I yeah. guess TikTok too. Animals are big. They make so much money. I I literally for this job interview I had because I made it to stage two. It's like technically stage four because first you just send in your resume, and then they figure out if they want a cover letter and a branded content profile from you. And they were like, "Send us your branded content." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm a journalist. I Here's haven't done my that." Cat. I literally sent oh, okay. them my cat. Yeah. I was like. This one's fun. This is like stuff I've done for KXUA, like professional ones. But I'm like, this one's kind of a for fun thing. But like, I'm happy to do TikTok for y'all because that's one of their platforms Absolutely. they would want us to run. And so I'm like, I know how to gain a following. I'll bring my cat it's up to platform. Bentonville. Yeah. yeah. I'll put my cat in your ads. Just give me the fucking job. Yeah. God. <laughs> no. And like, um, and so I have an interview tomorrow, literally with just me and the president of the company. And I'm Dang. like, oh. Fancy. <laughs> yeah. And it's a video interview, so I'm like, as long as my cats don't wreak havoc in the background, maybe, we are well, maybe good. if they do, maybe if they do, bring the one in, bring the famous uh -huh. one, because I have maybe two others. Not, maybe that's the ticket. Maybe yeah. That, yeah. That I'm doing. Oh. That one, that <laughs> one should be winning, but no, she's actually such a character, and she knows she's famous. She's like a diva. Of course. Because. We have two other cats. Because right? you encourage the behavior. I did. Once you encourage a behavior in a pet, that's oh, it. Oh yeah, no. She knows she's a diva. She will not sleep if they are in the same room as her. Like she doesn't like them. So whenever we go to bed That's the older cat? Yeah. She's uh... four. And the other one, Remy so Toph, like from Avatar the Last Airbender, is four. Remy is one. And Suki, we don't know her age because we got her when she was estimated to be seven months. Okay. But she's so tiny. She was like a malnourished cat. Like, she's probably uh -huh. this big. Like, literally, like... Still? Yeah. She's she's really they small. They make tiny cats like that? She's really, like... They don't grow? I, yeah. She may not. Well, yeah. but we engineer them. We're like, hey, you fuck this like, one and make different ones. Like, corgis. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, she's tiny. That's a tiny kitty. Yeah. Like, she's a very small cat. And then Remy... And then this is Toph. She's the diva. Cat talk. Yeah. Yeah. Cat talk. So she's the diva, but she doesn't like Suki at all. So if Suki is in the room, Toph will not sleep. And it got to the point where she was getting sick because she wouldn't sleep. That's weird. And so That's we ended up having to make it to where Toph sleeps in our room every night. Uh -huh. And the two other cats sleep in our roommate's room or just kind of wander the house. But Toph has like a specific pillow she will lay on and only that pillow. Oh, Lord. And if a blanket touches her, she will get up and leave until the blanket is not on the pillow. Like this, is the, the most, <laughs> this is the most dramatic cat ever. 
and I love her. I've had her for many years, and so she she does make me famous, which is nice. It's nice if I get to talk I mean, about like three million views for barking at the TV. <laughs> yeah, what if, I just, what if I just film myself barking at the television? Hey, yeah. it may do well. <laughs> I mean, just see some like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you're like, like well, that was twenty <laughs> seconds. That's good. Yeah, no, with that, it's it's so strange. People are like obsessed with her. I'm like. That's my oh, cat. Oh, they want they want the they are like you, a t shirt. Like, yeah, t shirt stickers. Everything. Yeah, I was like merch is a lot. Get you a Shopify so. store. Just make a fucking cat shirt. Yeah, it would actually do well because <clears throat> I have some great photos of her. Um, it would probably do more than well. I can only yeah. imagine that with that many people eyeballing it, it's gonna yeah. be fucking. You'd I'm be like, like I I don't, I don't think we have. Fingers. It's like a it's like, like a now, yeah. Uh, Forrest Gump, he's like, oh my god, we got a letter from some fruit company says we don't have to worry about money anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, yep, that would be great. I'd Thanks, love, baby. No, no, that's literally with Toph. I'm like, hey, it'll pay her medical bills. Like, she's the expensive cat. She's got a whole heart thing, so she's at diva. four. She was born with like a thing where part of her heart is like too big mm. and so she we just have to take her to a specialty vet like twice a year and it'll essentially be one day she'll be on blood thinners yeah yeah and then she'll be fine just trying to catch it yeah just yeah. trying to catch it early and so she's she knows she's like the queen of the house she runs the house we all just listen to her yeah bow like, down to your yeah, social bow media down to the cats yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so even the fucking animals know kurt yeah even the fucking animals know about the social media now yeah it's wild it's... we have fucked this whole place up oh 100 oh, percent, <laughs> absolutely like but no i i want to for my last show do well my last show i'll probably be crying so maybe show before last so is, this um, like, is this coming up then yeah my last show is gonna be december 15th day before oh, i graduate so like a month and a half yeah oh no two months yeah two months two months exactly two months from today actually is oh my shit. last show yeah because Damn. um it'll be the day before i graduate which is very exciting Have you thought about your exit song it's gonna be the first song i ever played Nice. So okay, doing a cool. full circle thing. It's gonna be um had, yeah, nice. had ten dollars by Cherry Glazer. It was cool. what I opened with. So I'm like, we're well, gonna close with that. And I have a list of every song I've ever played ever uh -huh. on college radio. So I'm gonna release like the master playlist and have that available because I keep a way to keep up with all that shit. Holy legally, hell. Legally we have to. Oh okay. another rule. But um no, we have to know what's spinning on air. If we have a violation, mm. so we know if it's a DJ violation or a song in the system violation, if that makes sense. Because, yeah, yeah. like, we have a system. Radio is so complex. Like, it's actually, like, it's I. It's around forever. Yeah. And yet it gets more complex uh -huh. with, like, the world of having DJs. Because we have a computer where three people decide our rotation, as we call it, or automation. And, like, they get paid to do that. They're paid to review new music every week. And then we have our shows. And that can be whatever the DJ decides to play, as long as it's within our rules. And so we have the automation computer makes us a report. But if something's playing over that that violates it, we mm. have to have a report of that. Jesus. And so we make them... They have it. Oh, it's so many rules and systems, and like you would not think radio is this complex. Like, just play the fucking song. Yeah. Don't yeah. say fuck and hit play. Yeah, literally. And yet somehow, I deal with so much paperwork. It's so like I love radio. It is very rewarding. Most, the thing is, the student DJs really don't know the complexities of it, which is nice. Yeah. They just get to they go just in get to and be they a play DJ. their music. Yeah. yeah. They had to play their music, and they just got to make sure that like, they upload it and, to one thing. And, and here's and, the yeah. music you get to choose from. Yeah. Don't cuss. Buy your own music. Or don't don't ask, or, don't tell. Uh -huh. And, you know, as long as, as long as it's clean and as long as I don't hear word of you talking about something you shouldn't on air, we are good. <laughs> yeah, we have to do that here, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one rule we have. Yeah, yeah, crimes. Not admit to crimes. Yeah. yeah that and Oh, we, we forgot to go over that one too. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I've never done a crime. Yeah. I I am You have it? I haven't. Well, I probably have, but I wouldn't say it's it on so here much if fun. I did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I accidentally did. I mean that was just yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. Turns out a long time ago, regular living was just committing crimes. Yeah. It's fine. It's oh, fine. Yeah. It's fine. No. 
Oh yeah, okay, no yeah. worries. I can probably do like 15 minutes more and then photo and then Okay. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, photo. Photo. Always a requirement. Got to have the social media graphic. Again, uh, the yeah. pervasiveness of social media. But I'm trying to think. And it's got to be like well done. You yeah. got to manicure it. You got to do a thing. Oh my gosh. You got to <coughs> It's always Who knew that the dawn of social media would bring in all of that so much because usually with radio that's something i've noticed is like i have to market myself for people to listen to my show like i have a professional instagram which oh, is yeah. like lydia s fletcher is my professional oh, one yeah. then i have a personal one where i just post for funsy things and like uh -huh. whatever but like i have like but now you got to keep up with both of those things yeah and i'm like what if i just because at first, like, I tried a thing where I didn't have a personal Instagram. And I right. just posted the, like, for funsies things on, like, close friend stories and stuff. And I was like, I look like way too much of a hard ass. Like, I look like I don't have fun. That's, right. like, this is all not. A, yeah, because I'm, I'm not an all business person. And so I was like, what a fun Instagram. And I rarely post there. But, like, you know, it's more just, like, if my cat's doing something stupid. Or, like, if I go out to a concert and I don't do a review on it and just want to post some uh -huh. photos from it. And like, cause that's one of the things I feel like is one of the lessons you learn in college is like that work life balance, like the work life, social balance. That's probably one well, of the few things college is good for. Because you're always the thing you want to do. You work in. Yeah. Oh so it's my like God. It consumes all of your. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, me and my girlfriend have had the conversation of like, we love going to concerts together, but she doesn't want to go with me if I'm working it. Right. Which is fine. She's like, I'll just drive separate work and show mode. up as audience. Because you get in a work yeah. mode, yeah. And it's one of those things that's, like, so strange. And so I'm hoping, like, career-wise, like, after college and everything, I'm like, I'd like a job where I can still go to concerts and have fun and not feel like I'm on call. Mm. And so I think if this one works out, that's definitely the how it's going to be. Yeah, for sure. It's more of an office thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, working in an office. Maybe. You'll see. Maybe. Yeah. I think, honestly, I think I'd actually enjoy it because as long I as like it's having, one of those cool ones. Yeah. As long as it's cool. I already have a whole, like, mechanical keyboard set up, a mouse. Like, uh -huh. I, I like PC stuff, so I have that already. I'm like, as long as they let me bring in my own keyboard because it sounds pretty and it's not clicky clacky. <laughs> no, it's a thing. It's the thing. I hate, I hate super clicky clacky keyboards, and it's such a random thing. But like, it's, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Everybody has their quirks. That yeah. is the one I have. Is and That's my girlfriend. So, uh, excuse me, yeah. but your keyboard is ass. Yeah. Can I no. buy you a different one? I literally. So my best friend had these keyboards. And she gave my girlfriend one for free, and it is the most obnoxious clicky clacky thing. But that's thing. the thing now. Having yeah. the extra click on the keyboard is like, popular. People are paying hundreds of dollars yeah. for that. And I'm like, these, because the thing that makes them do that, they're called switches. That's it. The I'm switch. like, that yeah. switch is awful. And it's anyone who knows keyboards, they're blues. Blues are the loudest. I have reds. Reds are the quietest, or mm. at least like mid level. So I like mine. They make a little bit of a clack, but. Something I, for the tactile, yeah, so you know you like, hit it. So you know you hit yeah. it, but like you don't have to deal with like echoing noises after. If that makes like, yeah, I yeah. just hate the surrounding noise it causes and everything. Because I'm like, I type really fast as well, so I'm just like, you know. Um, but she got my girlfriend that, and it's the most obnoxious keyboard. And I'm like, I will leave the room. Like I will leave <laughs> the office. Like this is bad. And like cell phone keyboard clicks make me insane. When people leave their keyboard clicks on, oh I'm like. God. What are you, a thousand years old? Who the fuck has their clicks on? Unfortunately, my girlfriend. No! No, literally, literally, so... Turn that shit off! So her phone is, like, legitimately falling apart. It's optional. Like, it's so optional. <laughs> I want her to turn it off. And literally, how we figured out she has it on, because she didn't even know she had it on, is that her phone decided to randomly turn on sound. Her phone's breaking. Like, it's yeah, breaking yeah, within yeah. the case. It starts doing all that weird, and funky shit yeah. where it touches itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the sound turned on randomly. Ah. And it's 5 a.m. And her phone just starts getting notifications. I'm like, turn your phone off. Like, I wake up, I'm like, turn your phone off. Please. Please. Like, I'm grouchy. And she goes to type in her passcode, and the keyboard clicks start. 
and her phone glitches out so bad to where it just like will auto type and so it starts typing and i'm like laying there and just like oh. covering my ears trying to go back to bed <coughs> and it drove me nuts but we fixed it and she'll get a new phone eventually it's iPhones are freaking expensive. They're all expensive. They're all expensive. Yeah. Like iPhone, otherwise awful. Yeah. Any any of the branded, the high yeah. end brands, you're you're done. No, I had to That's get a twelve hundred right off the top. I had to get a new laptop. Oh. Mine broke. Uh-huh. It literally like, uh, first of all, for like the past year, the X key hadn't worked. That's so fun whenever you work for KXUA. <laughs> That's so much fun. So I literally <laughs> kept like an X to copy and paste just in my little like sticky notes because the X did not want to work. So that was first of all, That's that was a, a fucking joy. nightmare. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, it'll just get me through undergrad and I'll ask for a new computer for a graduation gift. I would have plugged I'll in a damn up. keyboard. I, that's what I ended up doing towards the end. Yeah. And then it just straight up would not hold a charge. Like oh, yeah, laptops. It, Mine doesn't either. It has to stay yeah, plugged in 24-7. has to stay plugged yeah. in. But, but it's like, also like seven years old, yeah, so I can't Mine really was bitch. seven years yeah. old, and so I was like, maybe it's time. And yeah. so I'm like, hi, Mom. Can you help me? I can pay half. Pretty please. Pretty please. And she's like, it's for work. Sure, whatever. Yeah. And so, you know, we split the bill, and I was like, is this $1,500? Oh, that's I didn't even, just normal. I was like, I uh-huh. got the... Like I got the pro because I do video editing, yep. and so like have to get the pro. We so all I can do run the, Premiere. the videos now. You gotta yeah. get the pro. And so, but I got the cheapest model of uh-huh. the pro, which is still fifteen hundred. Still fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna cry. Especially after yeah. you gotta add like at least one feature. You can't get the yeah. base base model. What am yeah. I, a fucking plebe? No, like I like got a, like a I'm fucking like, poor person with the thirteen the inch. Bar. No, I need the fifteen inch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine's the thirteen with the touch bar because I'm like that's always the best. <laughs> and like because I genuinely use the touch bar for like if I need to scroll really. I fast love mine. The they got rid of it. The new ones, it's gone. I love mine. I, I can't love believe it. it's gone. No, it made me so sad, and that's also why I didn't get the especially editing one. softwares because they. Give you more options yeah. in that thing. I don't know, cause God, that's a whole thing. Like the ability to see your entire timeline on that bar and just tap where you know you need, and it just boop yeah. right there without having to scroll sideways oh a thousand times. Scrolling or like, and or having to compress it down to where it's all in that one. Screen oh, fucking then, hate! Just kill me. No, I have to go do ahead. That. Guess. Yeah. Yeah, because we have to make clean edits a lot of time for on air. So mm-hmm. I've just learned how to make a good clean edit that's not a beep because I find that very obnoxious. Artists, if you're listening, please just do a fade. Duck noise. I'm begging Wah. you. Duck noise fade, just not a beep. Like yeah. that's it ruins the flow. And so also I just, hide the mouth. A lot of people yeah. forget to hide the mouth and people who can read lips. Yeah, they know. know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> and so with with like clean edits we have to do I'll make them. I'll use, like, most of the time, uh, our school stopped giving us Adobe licenses, which is a whole fight we're having. Oh, well, I mean, so, it's 80 bucks a month. Yeah. 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 Buy a software that you don't have to well, pay a license for. Yeah, buy a software. But it's more that Adobe is not allowing there to be student accounts on devices that leave campus. So we have to be on campus oh, to use it. the fucking dumbass shit. Oh. Everyone Fuck hates. Adobe. Yeah, everyone hates Adobe. I swear, they're the fact, becoming their own worst enemy. Yeah. No, the fact it's the pay industry forever. standard. Pay forever. Pay like, forever. Because oh, more rules. Sorry, was, I'm not trying to cut you off. No, because it was like the one nineteen like lifetime license or exactly. something, and I almost bought that, and then they had the student discount where you could get a yearly license for forty bucks. Right. Happily did that. It got me through my summer internship. It's helped me with KXUA work. No more student licenses for students oh, at the U of A. No imagine. More. Yeah. We're just going to up and fuck the thing up. Yeah. And we have a whole, like, it actually fucked up student media so bad. We have a whole, we have the radio station. We have a TV station. We have a magazine. That's so that much shit InDesign. that uses all that same program. The TV uses Premiere. Fuck. The magazine and the yearbooks use InDesign. The newspaper, like print newspaper, yeah. uses InDesign as well. And then we have a girl who codes all of our websites and has to Photoshop and mm-hmm. Illustrator and all of that. And they're like, yeah, good luck. You can get it on these five laptops that you then have to rent out to students. Mm. Or they can be on the desktops within the school property. That's a fucking yeah. f- just goddamn. It's so it's so awful. What the actual fuck? And like for us, it affects us the least. Oh, it's a oh, money yeah. Grab. Oh oh, we're Adobe. We're lo- uh, yeah. uh, uh, 
Fuck them no, to hell. No, it's so ridiculous. Jesus like, Christ, I'm about to lose my fucking mind. No, no, <laughs> so I... It makes me so mad, dude. We had a meeting about, like, the head of the department, our directors, all set us down. We're like, okay, we need to talk about Adobe. And I just went... Can we just not? Yeah. And so we figured out, like, the best solution. How'd Flash work out for you, Adobe? How'd yeah. that work out? Hmm? Not great. You trying to kill off the rest of your fucking shit, you bunch of dum-dums? They're, They're so... the fucking Blackberry of fucking media making at this point. Yeah. They're just shooting their own fucking feet off and laughing about it. And it's so ridiculous because the thing is, <sighs> Adobe is the industry standard for I know. pretty much every industry. Everything. No, they are. And, like, like when I got interviewed, they were like, do you work in any Adobe mm-hmm. programs? They're I'm the like, industry dum-dums, too. Yeah. They're Someone's going to swoop in. Oh, and I'm so ready. Make it cheap. Make it, give us student discounts. Give us corporate discounts. You know, make like, it fair. Yeah. I'm not asking for a lot. Just fair. Just, yeah. I'll like, pay for it, but come on. Yeah. And so I'm really hoping something else comes around because it's. Holy snikes. Yeah. It sucks. But in the end, like, because I know we're kind of winding down. I'm like, even with all of the bureaucratic bullshit, because it is bureaucratic bullshit. It is. It's all right. Radio is one of the coolest mediums I've ever gotten to work in. That's Like, it's, I don't know, KX2A has been one of those things where, like, we're kind of the safe haven for, like, the kiddos that don't really fit in on campus. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know. Music typically. Music typically is. That's where we all go. Yeah. (laughs) And so it's just been, because I'm almost done, but I'm like, it's been really cool, like, getting to build this up into something. Because when I started, we work with, like, 50-plus record label promoters. They hadn't heard from us in five years. And wow. I had sent out an email and I was like, hey, I'm the new music director. Like, this was my first job. I'd love to get to know y'all. And I'm figuring this out. Um, would love to schedule some calls to kind of learn more about what you need from me. Because I had no clue. And the person before me didn't fully know. Granted, Sophie did. And she was the station manager before me. And she, I am riding off her coattails with quite a bit. Like, I'll always shout her out. She's phenomenal. Yeah. She's now like a journalist for NPR. So she stuck with radio. And I'm like, good for her. But. Before us two, they had no clue who yeah. we were. Just kind of going so, by paint by numbers. Shit. Yeah. It's failing. Who cares? Like, you know. Yeah. And so now it's like we kind of have the favor of the department, which is really fun, which means we get to put up a lot more like stuff. We now have permission to like put stuff outside our studios. And like oh, see, now yeah. that the department likes us, we get to bend the rules hey, and now that you're popular again um, yeah let's talk <laughs> yeah literally no that's literally how it's it that went. thing the meme from the tree the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's looking yes. around the corner yeah. yeah no that's literally what it is and i'm like you know uh but i got us here so i'll work with it you know it's one Hell of those yeah. things and like i don't know i have a very strong idea of who's going to be coming in after me which is very exciting he literally was like, how do I become station manager? I was like, don't fuck up your interview. Yeah. Don't fuck up your interview. Come in with a strong idea that I haven't implemented. Talk Help about. Him out. Do some faux yeah. interviews. I literally am. Like, I helped him get an internship that I had previously had. And there so you go. I'm like. Following the, f- the yeah. framework. Yeah, yeah. He's the first DJ I ever trained for the station, too. So <laughs> it's also like a really sweet, like, full circle moment. And. I'm like, just please don't mess up your interview and your shoe in. Like, we can practice. I'll Sits look at down, your presentation. Yeah, <laughs> like, something like that. But no, he he's a great <clears throat> guy, and so I'm really I'm excited for like where we're going. And also, I'm like, we need to get more connected to like Central Arkansas because there's yeah. so many artists and just cool shit down here. So many bands, and so we, many local bands. Yeah, and we stay in our little circle, and like we need to start. Yeah, you know, it's, it's three it's and a half gap. hours, it's the gap. but like, yeah. yeah. So, well, plug it. Let's yes, let's wrap perfect. her up. Perfect. Okay. Um, plug it. Everything I do. Whatever okay. you want. Okay. So, um, did I ever introduce myself? I don't think I ever said my name. I don't think we ever. That's do. That's hilarious. It'll be on okay. The, it'll be on the card when they. Click perfect. The so I'm the station manager for KXUA. If you're in Northwest Arkansas, you can tune in to us 24/7 on 88.3 FM. If you're not in Northwest Arkansas, you can still tune in to us. We use the Radio FX app, and then you just type in KXUA. Yeah. We do all non-top 40 from the last 40 years, so we don't do anything that y'all probably hear on other stations, which is ideal. Um, and if you want to tune into my show, I am on every single Friday at 1 p.m. Central. Um, next week is going to be a lot of new music and like kind of my recaps of favorites from October. And then the following week is my Halloween episode, so nice. maybe less new, but still like 
spooky fun kind of just mm-hmm. fun stuff like that um we're on instagram just at kxua and then um website is kxua.com pretty much if you just look up the letters kxua you're going to find right. us somewhere auto populate so, yeah Thanks, auto populate yeah. love that <laughs> we are going to be on google news now there like you go. all of our we do album reviews and show reviews oh and then yeah nice. so we do show reviews album reviews that we write up and then we have a newsletter we're starting. We might be getting into some of that ourselves. Yeah. Cool. We're doing a newsletter, and then we do we do so much that I have to think about, like everything. We may start Tiny Desk. So that we'll would have be a YouTube shit. Yeah. and stuff like that. And then also artists, if y'all are listening, we have a pinned post on our Instagram on how to submit music to us for review. Awesome. And all Arkansas artists go to a particular email, ah. which is explained in that post because we have a person dedicated for local music. Hell and that's yeah. his whole show. And he'll bring you into interview if you want. We'll get you media trained. Like we do stuff like that too. So totally. um just at KXUA on literally every platform, except Facebook, but who uses that anymore? Old people. Old people, and that's not really our audience. Yeah. <laughs> we do a lot of like punk and heavy stuff, so that might genuinely scare them. Um, um, but yeah, we do. That's, that's really what we do. If you want cool music that you probably haven't heard before, tune in sometime. All right, and we're on all the yeah. stuff. Crash Cast Pod, Twitter, Crash Cast Pod 1. Thank you for listening. Peace. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, that was awesome. Thank you so much for having me.